This is a regular scheduled meeting of the, uh, the Board of County Commissioners of Bradford County, April 21st, 2016 at 6.30 p.m. Uh, the first thing on the agenda is a public hearing and acting. Mr. Will Sexton. You up, Will. First item is a public hearing on the enactment of an ordinance. I'll read the ordinance by title first. I don't know that this is on. But. An ordinance of the Board of County Commissioners of Bradford County, Florida, creating a new section of the Bradford County Code of Ordinances, establishing guidelines and procedures for the collection and disposal of debris generated during disasters and declared states of emergency, providing direction to staff, providing for severability, providing direction to the codifier, and providing an effective date. I believe Mr. Johns is here. This ordinance is necessary for him to be able to, if I'm not mistaken, receive uh, reimbursement funding for the collection of debris following During emergencies. During a storm, right? During a state of emergency. Okay. We've, this is something that we've, we've done several different mm -hmm. times. We have to do every year. I hear a motion to approve. So moved. Got a motion to hear a second. second. Got a motion to second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed likewise. Five votes to approve. The second item, Mr. Chairman, is an ordinance of the Board of County Commissioners of Bradford County, Florida, amending Chapter 58 of the Bradford County Code of Ordinances to designate the Board of County Commissioners of Bradford County, Florida as the local planning agency for Bradford County, Florida, providing direction <coughs> to staff, providing for severability, providing direction to, the co direction to the codifier, and providing an effective date. Okay. As the Board will recall, at your last meeting or two meetings ago, the Board adopted two resolutions to appoint yourselves the uh, Planning and Zoning Board and the Board of Adjustment. This is the final of the three steps in that process, and that is to appoint yourselves as the local planning agency so that the board can hear those cases as they come up in the future. Okay. I hear a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Okay. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed likewise. Five votes to approve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Item number two is public comments. I have two comment cards that's that's not on the phosphate mining that I can see. I had a real nice pair of glasses, but I stepped on them. They couldn't stand the pressure. So, um, <laughs> I can't. so uh, uh, John Barton Lee. Barton, yes, sir. Barton. <coughs> Miss, Miss, uh, County Commissioners, I am John B. Lee. We all having a golf scene on May 7th, downtown start. I would like to ask the commissioners, each one of y'all, to help sponsor. Uh, the fun is to have hot dogs and water and all for the kids to to hear the gospel. Uh, I went to the city and got permission to have it. I had got some local gospel groups coming in for to spread the gospel road and have fun and I'd like to see if the county commissioners would like to sponsor that one way or another. And you know you just you're talking about a donation. Yes sir. How kind of what you got on your mind? Uh whatever y'all can do, each one. Uh whatever a little bit of help of help pay for hot dogs and pay for the different stuff like that. We have to pay for. You say twenty bucks a piece or something like that. Whatever, whatever y'all decided to do. We'll just sign and get, get money. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll right, thank you. We'll, we'll get we'll you some money. We'll All be right. happy to. Thank, thank you, Barton. You. Thank you, Barton. <clears throat> Mr. Guy Hartsfield. Reno. Guy Hartsfield, twenty-nine eighty-five Northwest Two Twenty-Eighth Street. Been there for 23 years. Had an ongoing battle with the maintenance on that road. We had a hump in it. They like to use it for a speed jump. After consideration, the county decided to take the speed jump down. That was fine. We have gone as long as six months without any grade work done on that road. In the last couple of years, we have widened the road, we the county, and we have lowered the road. There's been no maintenance on that road in the last two months. I had reason to be with the county commissioner who was in charge of that the other day, Monday, this Monday a week ago, and he called either the supervisor or the gentleman in charge of the road department. <coughs> I heard the conversation. 
we will be out there as soon as we finish up on the road we're on we will be right out there we will pull up the sides and we will fix the road the road has not been fixed yet it hasn't been graded yet no sir it has not been graded uh, which district are you in Thompson. Thompson. Okay. So, so that road hadn't been graded in two months. Uh, this, that road's been graded. Mr. Hartfield. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, it has. No, sir. It has not. I live on the road. There's six other couples that live on that road. That road has not been graded in the last two months. I I tell you what, Mr. Hartfield. What I'll do is, <clears throat> I'll get with our county manager. Yes, sir. Or he's here now. And uh, Brad, if you would uh, get with Paul and ride out there and, and check it out and get and with Kenny or whatever. Rather than okay. check out, excuse me, Mr. Woods, rather than check out the road, go and talk to the people that live on the road. I understand. But they go yes, out there. Yeah, I understand. That's what I'm telling him. Go, go out there and look at it, see what it's done, see, see, you know, see what maintenance it needs, and let's get it fixed. And it's not, I mean, I shouldn't have to come down there. I mean, other roads in the county, every month, every three weeks, they're done. They're done. They're done. Yes. Why should this little stretch of road, which is less than a half mile long, only six people live on it, I understand that. It's a pain in the butt. We'll, we'll take care of it. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Also, I have requested, a. since I was told by the gentleman in charge of the road department, that grader does not touch a piece of road unless it goes into the computer. Everything is documented. Every time it goes down a piece of road, it's documented that afternoon or the next day. I don't know when, but it is documented. I am requesting, under the Freedom of Information Act, a two-year backlog report through the computers on what that grader has done and why these roads are not being systematically forgotten. You take care of that, Mr. Carter. Oh. I will. He gonna beat your ass. Mm -hmm. May I approve? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I'll do it all in four one two. Yeah. Just saw Jack for doing such a good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, you got to do something. You don't know. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Lead commissioner. <clears throat> I'll see what it is. I'm open. All right. We have uh, everything else that I can see is on the phosphate mining and is, is there anyone else can think if they turned in one that's not on the phosphate that i missed you did sir okay sir. Did, did you turn in one of these slips oh i did not i apologize i have an item on the agenda oh, you're on the agenda if you're on the agenda you're good okay. we ain't got there yet yes sir yes sir all right um all right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. As, as uh, you recall last time, uh, we're not in the position to answer any questions. We're, ask, we're here to listen to you, to your concerns. Uh, we're going to hold it to three minutes uh, per, per person. And unless somebody wants to get up and be a leader for the whole group, but I don't see that because of all the people here. So... That being said, we'll ask you to come up forward, say your name and address, and you have three minutes to speak. And Mr. S Joe Snodgrass is, is the first one I have. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name is Joe Snodgrass. I live at 111 Clear Lake Road, Crescent City. Uh, as a concerned citizen that lives here in uh, north central Florida and who hopes to represent this county uh, in the coming months, 
It's alarming to me when I look at the uh, benefits for a few families that are put before common sense, before the importance of protecting everyone's health and welfare. The land and natural resources are not commodities to be exploited at all cost. The fragile environment of Florida, with rivers and lakes in close proximity to the new industrial site, is not the best fit. We are an agricultural and tourist state, and we cannot sacrifice one well-established shared income source to the experiment for a potential private income source. I support the short moratorium the citizens are asking for. Please do the right thing. Use common sense and put the people of the county first. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Gibson, Gibson, correct? Gibson, yes, ma'am. Okay, I see that down there. I said I stepped on my glasses. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Oliver? Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Kathleen Oliver, is that correct? Oliver? Yes, ma'am. Could be. <laughs> no, I can see. I just can't it looks like Oliver. It looks like Oliver. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. What? Here's all you come. That's all. Uh, Kathleen Culver, 626 State Road, 26, Melrose. Okay. Um, I want to speak for the moratorium on new mining applications. It seems like when a lot is at risk, when the phosphate market could crash and leave investments bankrupt, when the New River and Santa Fe River might be hurt, and all the beauty and pleasures and tourism lost, it's a good idea to be careful, deliberate. I have retired from teaching literature at Santa Fe here in Stark, but I thought I'd bring you a verse from a famous old poem that warns of the cost of fixing the damages after a mistake rather than preventing the damage in the first place. Here we go. The mischief, of course, should be stopped at the source. Come, friends, come on, neighbors, let us rally. For it makes better sense to rely on a fence than an ambulance down in the valley. Um, the moratorium, as I see it, would be a fence preventing accidents. I was on the river myself kayaking this week. The beauty was so amazing, so breathtaking. I didn't dwell on the changes that I had seen, like since in the, my 50 years on the river, like how the grasses that were once green are now brown. But I just dwelt on the beauty that we still have, the immense beauty that is still there. So let's keep what we have. Let's join Union County's moratorium. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kate Ellison. See, I could read that one. Good afternoon, ma'am. Kate Ellison, 857 Southeast 32nd Way, Melrose 32666. I urge you to, consider, to reconsider your vote to dismiss the mining moratorium taken at an emergency meeting since adequate notice of the vote was not given. We have all listened at length to HPS reports and proposals, so it is only fair that you study the report on long-term economic effects of mining in Florida that was sent to you today by Marilee from our Santa Fe River. The data shows, among other things, the growth stunting impacts of mining in Florida. We have heard numerous promises and assurances about how different this mine will be from any other mine that's ever been dug. 
we have been told the DEP and the EPA will protect us in the river, the aquifer, and the land. I wasn't born yesterday. I've seen how hamstrung the EPA and especially the DEP have become. Their regulations are numerous, but their willingness and ability to enforce weaker and weaker rules is just not there. I listen with disbelief when miners assert that the DEP will stop any potential violations. HPS also accuses the North Central Regional Planning Council of being outside interference. This project, covering not just the original 7,200 acres, but more like 11,000 acres across two counties and affecting two rivers, should be guided by regional planning. The proposed mine involves new technology to be tried for the first time on the banks of the new river. They will shut it down if anything doesn't work, again, not born yesterday. This is not what mining companies do when things go wrong. Maybe we are dealing with local families now, but when the work starts, we will be dealing with a large corporation. They try to save their project, one small choice at a time, until even with the best of intentions, the project is not what was promised. I question the miners' intentions and their ability to oversee this project, since there have already been violations like missing well permits. There have been preparations, like draining the land so it isn't classified swampland when permit time comes. There have been changes, like the acreage included, and the time until reclamation must begin. This is a scenario, scenario we've all seen before. A thousand tiny steps, and eventually we have a Superfund site on our hands. No one intended it, but it happens frequently with long-term terrible consequences. People with much greater knowledge than mine have suggested that although you would not, you, you would not ban mining in the county, you could update the standards for example, protecting our crucial swampland from mining. You have the opportunity to do no harm by voting for this proposal. You can give yourselves time to update your regulations. Please adopt this one-year mining permit moratorium. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Is Kimberly Han Hankinson? Hankinson? Henderson? Henderson, okay. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Thank you. Sorry, I just learned about this a few days ago. So I was completely caught off guard and I feel um, kind of unprepared. But um, I don't I didn't know much about phosphate mining, exactly what all it entailed. Um, but it was pretty simple once I started um, doing some research online. Um, the environmental the Department of Environmental Protection had done a quite lengthy um, study. They had hired uh, a group to do the study. And um, it is, to say the least, just appalling that we're even standing here today to, to discuss this. It, it, it's a no-brainer to me. Um, Hampton Lake is a pristine sanctuary, and it is mine, as well as others, daily retreat. Um, it's not just a lake about a lake. It's about all of our lakes. Um, I have friends and family that come and they comment on the peacefulness and beauty that's there and how they would love to move there. And of course, I tell them, well, there's places for sale all over. Um, you know, uh, I recently remarried a few years ago and I asked my husband, you know, my daughter's graduated, done with the school systems now. Would you like to move to Alachua County? And he said, absolutely not. To leave all this, this is a 25-minute drive, enough time to, you know, settle down and leave work behind and enjoy this. Look at this. Why would you want to leave it? And I'm like, it's a gym. Um, preparing my notes and thinking about just exactly what's at stake, I'm looking out my dining room window, and the, the sun was shining off the lake just as if it was glitter. I took a picture of it in case you wanted to see it. I would like to share it with you. But it breaks my heart 
that we're going to destroy a natural resource that God gave to us, has loaned to us, and destroy it so that a few families and maybe our county government and state can prosper. It's not worth it. Alterations were made to the waterways in Keystone. I can't tell you the details because I was so young. But I can tell you, as a child and as a teenager, sorry, I remember my family skiing and, and swimming at Lake Geneva, spring breaks and summer vacations. And that's something I'll never be able to share with my children or grandchildren because Lake Geneva is almost there's there's no there's no real way to access the lake. There's really hardly even a lake there anymore. Um, and I asked this question just for thought: How much research have each of you done on this, and what does it really mean to the residents in your districts? <coughs> Property appraiser's office has no answers for what this all means. They have had no talk about it, so them being located in the county off the the county courthouse in the county i felt like wow well maybe i'm not that out of touch um i just kind of wonder if each of you have been sold on the idea of how great this would be and what it would mean to our county by an overpaid mining salesperson. I believe that Bradford County is being taken advantage of because I, I just kind of wonder how many people have taken the time to research. I know that the uh, legislature gains profits from the mining companies annually. Um, looking at the studies that um, Post mining in Polk County, Central Florida, um, thousands of wetlands, 343 miles of streams and associated floodplains are lost. I mean, the statistics and information are staggering. Florida, the Florida aquifer levels in the area declined by 20 to 50 feet. I don't think that we can actually afford to, to take that risk as residents, as county commissioners. Um, I mean, I, I wish I had more time. I hate that I'm yeah. only allowed a few minutes, but you know, the, the number of agencies that have to step in by, um, by environmental protection, um, Everybody has to jump on board. Everybody has to spend more money to cover up the damage that's done. And even still, it's not good enough. It will never be the way it, it was. God made it the way he made it. Why ruin it? I don't think that we need to be the Judases of Bradford County and sell our positions and authorities and decisions for a little bit of money. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am. <clears throat> ma'am. We missed your name and address, please, ma'am. My name is Kimberly Henriksen. I'm at 6948 Southwest 101 Street, Hampton, Florida. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Karen Chadwick. Karen Chadwick, 179 West Strickland Road, Interlochen. Uh, I support the moratorium, and I hope you will um, approve that. I think uh, more time needs to be taken to um, really see what's going on. I live next to a, very close to a sand mine, and what they're excavating all the time, and we've been told our lake levels, they're, they're way down like Keystone's lakes are. Um, it has to do with the excavation pulls that surface water down and a lot of water evaporates and I can hear them out there. The trucks, they're probably about a mile away and I can hear them out there all the time. They, they work day and night and that's, that's not something I, I think anybody that lives out in a peaceful area would want to hear. 
Um, groundwater withdrawals are becoming a big issue, as I'm sure you know. That's what the Central Florida Water Initiative is about. Um, in Central Florida and the SB 536 water use plan that's designated water withdrawals from rivers and lakes all across the state. Uh, we can't keep using groundwater like we have been. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, now at one of the previous meetings, the landowners said they were going to use a new type of processing, a dry processing that wouldn't use so much water. And I asked if, and they weren't going to manufacture any fertilizer, and I asked if they could in the future, would it be possible for them to, once they got established, say, well, let's manufacture the fertilizer here. And they said, yeah, that, that would be possible. So if this got started, then you, you know, you're opening yourself to lots of other problems in the future, possibly. They said that the landowners themselves said that that could be a possibility. Also, um, at one of the other meetings, <clears throat> they were talking about um, having their water, their groundwater withdrawals monitored. And I know there's a big uh, controversy going on. Well, not a controversy. The, the groundwater withdrawals need to be metered, and they're, real, they're not adequately metered. And the Suwannee River District is switching to a system where they don't actually meter the individual wells. They, they um, look at what a company, a farm, or whoever's using, whoever has a consumptive use permit, they look at their electricity use, and it's part of the streamlining process. They look at the electricity, electricity use, and they estimate how much water they're using. It doesn't make sense to me, but that's, you can ask them, that's what they're switching to. So if they use generators for their wells, then they won't be metered at all. And that's something that's going on now, so that, that needs to be considered. Um, and I brought this, I grew up in Sarasota and watched uh, what was happening with Mosaic. And you know they do have a lot of problems down there, I'm sure anybody knows. And there was a settlement in uh, 2015 um, I'll just read this first sentence and then I'll, I'll close. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the U.S. Department of Justice announced a settlement with Mosaic Fertilizer that will ensure the proper treatment, storage, and disposal of an estimated 60 billion pounds <coughs> excuse me, of hazardous waste at six Mosaic facilities in Florida and two in Louisiana. And there's, there's all kinds of violations. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a huge settlement, it's a lot of problems. Please embrace the moratorium, and uh, I'll leave this with you. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie Host or Halls? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. My name is Jackie Host. I live at 5784 Southeast First Avenue. Keystone Heights, Florida, but I am a Bradford County resident. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've done a lot of research on mining and water withdrawals since about 1998, when the lake I live on started going dry, and until just recently, it started getting a little water back in it. But um, since about 2004, it's been completely dry. I thought maybe it would just get low, but it completely went away, which broke my heart, and I completely relate with that young lady. Um, and what I have discovered is that mining companies often promise economic boom and uh, health and safety for communities, but nothing could be further from the truth when it gets done um, they get everything they want out of the earth. The communities are left with bigger bills than they can pay for and clean up and uh, health problems with, uh, you know, children, f uh, fetuses, and er everything else. It's really, really disturbing. And now we don't know, you know, we need economic growth in Bradford County. There's no doubt about that. But what we have here is, uh, since we are a small county and there aren't a lot of people here, it really is uh, something wonderful. And I'm afraid that um, the promise of, you know, everybody making more money and it uh, 
really helping our community is uh, just kind of a pie in the sky like it always has been. It does sound like maybe it's a good thing and if it is a, a indeed a green um, you know industry then uh, what would be wrong with uh, having this moratorium to give us a chance to really uh, figure out and 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 know if it is a good thing for our county and we should be really really careful um, there's just so many places all across the state that have had bad consequences by just going in on the on the on the on the word that it um, oh it's going to be safe you're all going to get rich and then it just doesn't happen also um, there's a right now I don't know if anybody's into stocks and all that but there's a glut of phosphate on, on the world market right now. So I'm not sure that um, even the people who are most concerned and think they're going to get more money by doing this to their land, that they will end up getting what they think they might get anyhow. I mean, all the fertilizer companies are either eliminating phosphate or are reducing it a lot, so they aren't using it a lot. So um, I would just encourage you to please support uh, this 12-month uh, memoriam. It, I think it would mean a lot to the people who are, you know, concerned about their property to, to really get the research and all that that is needed. And, and just don't, don't let people push you into making up your minds and doing this real quickly. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Ms. Karen? Hey, Ms. Karen, how you doing? I'm okay, how about you? Great. Good. I'm Pat Karen. I live at 14663 Southwest, 155th Avenue, Brooker. And I'm about a stone's throw from <laughs> the property that could be mined. So I, I personally, I am concerned. And I only found out about this this afternoon, and I doubt that very many of my neighbors knew about it either, about this meeting. Um, I have a well. What is this going to do my, to, my, to my drinking water? Um, and also there is a, a gas plant near Brooker. How would this proposed mining affect that? We have gas lines going out in all directions from the gas plant and when you start digging into the Florida limestone, things can shift. I'm not a scientist. I haven't read all the research, just touched on it, but enough of it that I'm concerned, and I know that my neighbors, if they knew about this meeting tonight, they probably more of them would be here. And we just want a year's moratorium, uh, look into this, into this more carefully so that we know what we're getting into and we don't get ourselves into a mess we can't get out of. Ms. Karen, uh, let, let me just say one thing. Uh, not this Friday, but Friday, the next Friday, mm -hmm. is we were going to have a workshop to discuss all this. We, we, we didn't really realize everybody would be here tonight. So that's when we kind of anticipated everybody would be in here and it's, oh. and it's advertising all in the paper. So uh, it was we were, we were trying to get it out. Yes, okay, good. Okay. Ms. And, and let me do say this mm -hmm. because I, I don't want to be misconstrued. I knew nothing about any of this until I looked at an email, emails that came to me. Uh, my thing was that when I, I didn't know, we were, we were just here scheduled for a regular board meeting until those, all those emails came in. So when people, email and say they wanted to come, we try to accommodate them. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we've been trying to put together some workshops to, to talk about this and, and to go over it. Mm -hmm. So I want you to know that you knew about as much as I knew. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, and, and I'll be honest with you, and I, I know the emails had to come last, the, last night because when I looked at my emails the day before, none of those emails were there. Mm -hmm. So, so I didn't have any idea except the thing that we were having a regular board meeting. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think most of the clinicians. Well, have. that's what I was trying to explain. Mm-hmm. I, I thought everybody would be here so. Friday week. You know? well, we'll probably be back. Oh, I'm, pre- I'm sure you will. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. But it is a regular Thank you. board meeting. Yeah, it's advertised a, right. all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Karen. Uh, Ms. Carol Mosley. Uh, hello, my name is Carol Mosley. I live at 10121 Southwest 104th Avenue in Graham, though we have to list our address as Hampton since that's who delivers our mail. Uh, I moved to Graham a little over 17 years ago with my mother. Uh, we moved from Miami after our home was damaged in Hurricane Andrew. And uh, we rebuilt down there, sold out, and headed for a quieter living where we could see the stars at night without light pollution and we could drink unchlorinated water straight from the earth. Uh, Three months after we moved in, my mother passed away from a stroke. Her ashes are buried in an urn in in a garden at my house, and uh, it's my hope that I could live a quiet existence here until I myself check out for the great beyond. Um, (coughs) I can hear cows across the street mooing when I go out, and every now and then I have a neighbor who likes to shoot off his rapid-fire gun in the backyard for practice, so, but those are temporary noises. I can hear the speedway uh, about 15, 17 miles away when they rev up their engines, and that's okay too, because that's all temporary. But to think that 20 hours a day, five or six days a week, I might be hearing some kind of noise from drilling, that, that would really um, put a damper on the quality of life that I came here to enjoy. Um, I'm going to go to the reasons to enact the moratorium before I go to the questions about the process in case I run out of time. Uh, The comprehensive plan for mining is decades old in this county. The commissioners have a responsibility to assure that it meets with current circumstances and obvious changes to the county over the last 30 years. Uh, That alone will take time. Will zoning variances be required for the project? The citizens of this county should have time, once we get our questions answered, to assess the potential benefit versus potential harm. What's the rush? HPS says it's just in exploratory mode anyway, and their spokesperson, Ms. Wetstein, said on TV news after the union meeting, uh, that uh, uh, after their one-year moratorium decision, that HPS is not planning on pulling permits right away anyways. And we know nothing about the miraculous new eco-friendly process of extraction. It is experimental, and we are only to see a few months of operations in another county as an example. So the questions that we need answered, quality of life questions. Is it true that the digging will take place 20 hours per day, five or six days a week? How many lumens of light will there be? Will we have light pollution for the neighbors? Uh, How far will sound travel, especially at night? How many gallons of water will be pumped from the aquifer each day? Even if it's half the typical amount, what does that amount to? Uh, Which local roads would be used to truck the rocks out? Will our local wells be affected in any way? If they are, who will pay? As a limited liability corporation, just how limited will the liability of HPS be? Uh, environmental sustainability issues. What is the process of extraction? Will it be done by scooping, blasting, fracturing, injecting of chemicals or other liquids? Will it increase the nitrate, nitrite levels in the rivers, lakes, or aquifer? Remember how laundry detergents used to have phosphates until it caused algal blooms in lakes and streams? Will it release any gases such as sulfur or methane? Will it bring radon up from the earth? Will the phosphate be sent overseas or stay in the U.S.? Do they have contracts in place for the sales? For what period of time? With whom? Will any phosphate be left on site for future generations? Will any other minerals be mined? Any potential for increased sinkholes from aquifer water depletion or earth vibrations? Any endangered species of concern, such as toads or mussels, etc., on the site? Is there an environmental impact statement prepared yet? What happens if the project goes bankrupt? Will the county be left with a mess? Possible? Uh, This is possible because of (laughs) declining use of phosphates uh, due to water pollution and growing demand for organics. Um, Also, there are new deposits discovered. What about honest dealings? We don't know what was discussed when HPS met individually with each of the commissioners. We should hear from each commissioner who met with them whether any promises of employment or other compensations were offered uh, from them or their family members. Do any commissioners? Let, let, let. Do any we, commissioners? We gave, ma'am, just to say, we gave everyone a chance to talk, and everybody, everybody's listened to what everybody's had to say. Please, 
yield to the lady and let her finish her conversation. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you. Um, do any commissioners have a personal interest in the project at all? Why was one regular meeting canceled and then an emergency meeting called on 4-5, at which time a vote was taken, 3-2, to two, for no moratorium? Not even the three months that I heard uh, Chairman Lewis beg for because he's been asked so many questions that can't be answered as well as Commissioner Reddick, I believe. Um, okay, what about the wells that were dug without a permit and that got a $400 fine? What about the wetlands draining? Uh, Mr. Hazlin said on a 4-5 meeting, you can't stop it. It's going to happen. It's my land, as if the impact on neighbors is irrelevant. What is the purpose of the two permits that were pulled on April 15th after that meeting? Uh, there was a, uh, gone down to the DPA, I got notice there was a permit pulled for mining and a permit pulled for water wells. Um, what is that about? Uh, one is for 38 wells to monitor aquifer water levels and the other for exploratory mining. Didn't Hazen indicate to the Board of County Commissioners on 4-5 when asked by one of the commissioners on April 5th, I believe it was Commissioner Sellers, um, you're not planning on going down and pulling any permits right away, are you? And they said, no, ma'am. So um, what's that about? Uh, how many jobs? 181 is what we've been told. In what specific capacities? At what starting salaries? Are any of those jobs to be held by members of the four HPS families? <coughs> Which ones? How many jobs will be locally held? Will jobs diminish over time uh, as time proceeds? Can the permit be sold or transferred to another entity? If they decide not to mine, will the permit then allow for other extraction industries such as hydraulic fracturing? So many questions, so few answers. You all have a copy of my questions there, and I hope that indeed these questions will be answered at the workshop. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Mr. Ed Emery. Hi, my name's Ed Emery, 2510 Northwest 38th Street, Gainesville, Florida. I'm here um, because I hope to serve the citizens of Bradford County one day as your congressman. I also have family here. My grandson is here. He's told me that he lives less than a mile from where some of this property is going to be mined. I want to make sure that you, the commission, studies the impact that's going to happen to this county. What types of jobs? How many jobs? She just mentioned a figure that was a lot higher than the last figure I heard. The last figure I heard was 65 jobs. What's going to happen to the tax base? Is your tax base going to go up and then go right back down? I've heard the family say that the land will be restored, but then I hear the mining companies stand up and say, restoration. You need to know the difference between res restoration and restoring. Restoration. Reclamation, I'm sorry. Restoration means same as it was. Reclamation, mm -hmm. which 95% of mining companies use, means as good, not the same. What about the water use? Somebody questioned how much water is going to be used. Figures that I heard at one of the Union County meetings was 1,100 gallons a minute, which transfers to 66,000 an hour, one and a half, over 1.5 million gallons a day. And there are two units that they were talking about, so you've got to double that. That's 3,168 gallons of water a day. What's that going to do to the water in Bradford County? You were elected to represent all of the citizens of Bradford County. And I know it's hard to ignore certain powers that be, but you've got to keep that in mind that all of the citizens matter. And as for the uh, multinational corporation, Mosaic, basically ruining Bradford County and your environment to send phosphate, and they'll deny it, but I've done my research. Most of the phosphate mosaic mines goes to China, communist China. And that just seems un-American to me. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Ms. Joyce King. Ms. Joyce King. 
Ó, daí é um bunch. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. I uh, thank you for this opportunity to come to come before you. My name is Joyce King. Sure. Uh, I live at uh, 280 Southeast 31st Way, uh, Melrose, but I live in Bradford County. I represent Santa Fe Audubon and our members in Bradford County. Although I was born in this part of Florida and have since returned to the rural life I love here, I lived over 40 years in St. Petersburg, where I was involved in conservation activities and served on the board of Audubon, Florida for many years. In that capacity and in many other opportunities, I visited many phosphate sites to experience the realities of mining impacts on birds and wildlife, as well as the communities where mining took place. It is difficult to imagine that any landowner would assign a fate to his land that could be more devastating than phosphate mining. Regardless of their best efforts, mined land is ruined land, will be forever. The land is altered in every possible way, geologically, hydrologically, and ecologically. Having removed the phosphate, the land is impoverished, and reclaimed land cannot meet the need for land where people, wildlife, nor communities can thrive. Impacts far from the mined land are lasting and damaging in the rivers, the wetlands, the aquifer, and above all, in the communities covered with mining dust. We ask that you vote again to create a moratorium on mining permits for a year, giving time to reconsider a comprehensive plan that addresses the conservation issues in Bradford County. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jill McCurvey? McCurvey? Yes, ma'am. McGuire. I'm McGuire. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I got the Jill right anyway, right? <laughs> McGuire. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Thank you for hearing us tonight. Uh, my name is Jill McGuire. I live at 1812 Southeast State Road 21 in Melrose. I'm also a Bradford County uh, resident. And I'm here representing the Santa Fe Lake Dwellers Association. Um, we, our group was formed almost 40 years ago when um, Georgia Pacific um, came up with a plan to mine peat in the Santa Fe swamp. And um, so we're not just um, a homeowner's group, although we do our share to add to the coffers of the tax rolls in, in Bradford County. Uh, but we, since that time, we've become like an environmental watchdog is kind of the way we feel about ourselves. Uh, our main uh, purpose is to protect the lake. Uh, we are the headwaters of the Santa Fe River, and we take that role very seriously. Um, in past um, meetings with the Water Management District, um, our Swanee is our district, um, I have asked what, what would have been the consequences if that mine had gone forward, if we hadn't been able to stop it. And I was told that Lake Santa Fe would definitely have been ruined, devastated, and so would Santa Fe River. So um, I'm saying this in, you know, the position that you all are in to protect the new river and the Santa Fe River, um, pleading with you to reconsider your vote. Um, I'm sorry I will not be able to be here for the meeting uh, next Friday night. So um, I hope that you will vote again, vacate the vote that you already took and vote again after you've, everybody's had a chance to, to uh, talk to you about their concerns. I was really stunned to find out that the, the vote took place, as a matter of fact, because I've been following this very closely and I had planned to come and talk to you and then I heard the vote had been made, so I was, I was very disappointed and, and angry. Um, I worked in Keystone. We had a, um, 
uh, MFL uh, prevention and recovery group uh, working on the, the Keystone uh, situation for um, with with both water management districts a few years ago and um, I represented Santa, Lake Santa Fe they're right across the ridge from us we're very lucky we have a good clay layer under our lake and our, our lake levels have been fairly stable unlike uh, the lady's description of Keystone uh, was so impassioned I I too swam in in Lake Geneva as a, as a kid, and many of us did learn to swim there. And um, it's the people in Keystone. But we're told for years that the sand mines nearby and were you know not affecting them. But during those during those meetings, it came to light that not only the sand mines, but all the way to the city of Jacksonville were drawing down the aquifer beneath us, beneath all of us. I think we probably all know that now. Um, the, the Santa Fe River has um, much lower flows than it did before. Um, so it's, the hydrology is such a complicated thing. The, our aquifers, all the different aquifers in the surface waters, they're all connected and it's a very dangerous thing to get into something like this in such a sensitive area. So um, pleading with you all to um, consider all the comments and uh, consider the, the moratorium to um, really get the, the facts behind this very Thank dangerous you. situation. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Paul Steele. Good evening, Paul Steele, Bradford, or uh, 14167 Southwest 101st Avenue, Sampson City. Uh, I commented last at your last meeting about uh, why I thought a moratorium was not was not a good idea, and I just want to repeat that again tonight. I think that you have plenty of time uh, to make the necessary changes in your land development regulations. Uh, your comprehensive plan is already pretty strong. That could be tweaked in a few places. Uh, I think trying to do a moratorium is just going to cause significant litigation issues. Uh, I would urge you, in respect to the workshop, to really focus, try to focus that workshop not on kind of what you've been hearing tonight, which is things that are actually outside your realm, but really focus on your land development regulations and your comprehensive plan and focus on the things that you as a county have uh, control over, which is your zoning and your planning. And uh, again, I think a, a moratorium is, is not the best solution. At the end of the, the workshop, I think it's uh, if, you, if your mind changes, but I definitely would not do a reconsideration motion because of the way that the initial uh, action came about. I think if you want to do a moratorium, you should start that process over and advertise it pro properly and go through the necessary legal uh, steps. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steele. Steve Hen Hendrickson. If I may, I would like to show you a picture of um, an area down in um, Polk County. It was less than 60 years what happened before and after mining. Families playing, swimming, went completely dry. Hey, what side is that on? Uh, this is part of the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. That's their, their plan. Um, the health risk that are involved in the mining, um, phosphate rock is radioactive. Two, er two key areas of concern for impacts to public health 
whether the radioactive elements can get into the water supplies, be released to the air, absorbed into the skin, or accumulated in fish or animals, and what happens when the radioactive particles such as radium and thorium are concentrated in the clay, settling in ponds. Medical researchers and environmental researchers don't agree on the risk, on, don't agree on the risk and links between phosphate strip mining and cancer. Wouldn't it be something if we found that out? Um, there are um, risk in the inhaling the odorless, tasteless radon vapors um, coming from the water and is even greater when you ingest those particles. So talking about what happens, the clay that is surfaced ruins all the runoff. There's nothing that goes back. No matter how much they try to put the land back the way they found it, it's impossible. Um, I would not consider myself to be a tree hugger or um, somebody that is, you know, some animal rights activist or anything like that. However, um, I think we should be very responsible and cautious and make educated decisions, especially those in authoritative positions. Um, strip mining alters ecosystems forever. Um, there are every, <laughs> uh, every animal that was listed um, in this, how does one go about moving sandhill cranes, panthers, burrowing owls, protected species, indigo snakes, the, the gopher turtles? We have gopher turtles all around Hampton Lake. They, I see them in the yard going down, coming up, laying eggs. Um, just down the street a little bit, there's more than a dozen gopher holes in the, in the places where we walk. Um, I, I would have to plead again with you that the animals are going to also take a hit and um, will be sacrificed if you choose to do this. And it's not just one area, it's a lot of areas, all the runoff. Um, the topography becomes cratered or moonscaped. There's, there's no way to, to, to return it the way we found it. Um, whatever else you want to say. I, I hope this is not a lost cause. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Ms. Rudolph. Hello. Hi. My name Hello. is Stasha Rudolph, and even though I have a funny name, I have been, uh, in, my family's been in America for 12 generations, since before the American Revolution. And I believe in good government. I am a citizen of Bradford County, a taxpayer, a voter. Uh, the people that know me know that I'm on about four or five nonprofit, non-paying boards to help uh, Melrose, that's where I live, uh, be a better place. And I really do believe in good government. And what I see that could happen here is a story that happens all the time in American history. Mining companies lie and do bad things, and they convince poor counties or counties that want money that they should do this. And it is a story in Tennessee. It's a story in West Virginia. It's a story in Montana. It's a story in Colorado. And if we don't know this by now, we need a little more time. I know there are some, I read in the paper, there are four families that stand to benefit greatly. And I'm all for people making money, you know, that's fine. But at the expense of all of us, I think that's why we elected you. And you need to make good decisions. And I know this is not a good decision, but at least we need more time to study it. I received an email two days ago from a very, uh, thorough activist, and I think there were six links and a total of 700 pages just on the impact of phosphor mining, phosphate mining in Florida. Now, I don't know about you, but I cannot read and study 650 pages of impact studies in a couple weeks. But maybe you guys are all experts already. But I'm telling you right now, you have a duty to us. We voted for you, and this is part of what America should be and sometimes it isn't. And I think we all know that this country has gone a little bit astray with big money and the interest of a few at the expense of the interest of the rest of us. And not just us now. What about people? I don't have any children. I'm worried about this. I don't have any grandchildren. 
but I'm worried. And anybody here with kids or grandchildren should be worried too. I'll close with, I moved from Dade County, lived there 20 years. There's a reason I moved to Bradford County. You know why? It's beautiful. And I know we have problems, I do. And I know we need money, but there are better ways to build a stronger Bradford financial system in the county than doing a mine, trust me. It takes a little bit more work, it does take more work, to develop industries and to develop tourism, but we have a lot here and I hope I don't have to move again. Thank Thanks. You, Thank you. Ms. Courtney Snyder. Thank you for letting me come speak today. My name is Courtney Snyder. I live at 100 at a, excuse me, South 5011 Southwest 119th Loop, Lake Butler, Florida. Now, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I've been I've been dealing with this since I first found out about it when it hit the paper in January, and this is this has consumed me because it is directly across the street from my from me and my family, and I have a two-year-old with asthma. Okay. I don't know if you're very familiar with how asthma works, but basically everything around you makes you sick. You move too much, you get sick. You run, you get sick. You get too much dust, which phosphate mines are extremely dusty. You will get sick and you cannot breathe. Okay. Asthma is also induced by severe allergies, which everyone in my family has. Furthermore, um, another thing that I have not seen come up a whole lot is that there are prisons in both of our counties. Now this butts up right behind the, uh, right behind RMC, which is the regional and medical center for the northern region of the Department of Corrections. Who's housed there? I don't know how many of them, but a good majority of those inmates are already sick because it is a medical center. Okay, this is right behind it. Okay, there are a lot of health concerns that can be a, that come up with these mines. A mine of any type, you have health concerns. But with a phosphate mine, you've got all this radioactive dust floating around. And that can cause these inmates to become sick, which the state will have to rebudget what they spend on Department of Corrections to cover the difference of health costs on their inmates. And then you're faced with lawsuits from the inmates' families because you allow, because, you know, you or Union County both allowed these, these mines to be put in right next to the prisons. Okay? Now, a lot of the folks that live in both of our counties work at these prisons. That's exposing them to it. And over where I live, a lot of people in my neighborhood work at the prison. We'll have 24-hour exposure, whether we're at home or away. Okay. Um, lady asked about the gas plant in Brooker. I can't remember who you were. Ms. Karen. Yes. The gas plant in Brooker, if you can find the maps, get with somebody from our group, Citizens Against Phosphate Mining in Union and Bradford County. We have the maps that HPS published on their website. Whether or not they've allowed those to remain on their website is yet to be seen because they're constantly changing their website. Talk about transparency. Um, the gas plant is right dead in the center of the Brooker area that's highlighted on the map. And I have not been able to get an adequate confirmation, but I believe that because that structure is already there, they will more than likely um, basically turn it into the beneficiation plant, which is what separates the phosphate from the rock, the matrix, as they call it. Now, speaking of the beneficiation plant, when they addressed the Rotary Club in Union County, it made this little tiny two-paragraph article in the paper, and they mentioned a second beneficiation plant. They have yet to mention that in public at any of the Union County meetings. We have asked them repetitively on their website, on their Facebook page, as well as in public forum, and have not been given an adequate answer as to whether or not this is happening, the second beneficiation plant, much less where it will be located. Okay, so that's, there's, there's more unanswered questions than just that. Now, we're gonna talk about the proximity to our homes. Both of my neighbors are retirees. I don't know about any of the neighborhoods here in Bradford County that would affect y'all, how many retirees y'all have. 
But Florida's full of retirees. A lot of people move to Florida because it's warm and it's beautiful. Both of my neighbors are retirees. The property line for this proposed mine is about 250 feet away from their front door. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the jobs. They have removed their... Um, their economic impact statement from their website, but in that economic impact statement, it tells you that in Union County, there will be 65 jobs directly related to the mine. Of those 65, 15 of those jobs will be supplied directly to Union County residents. Now, Union County's got 15,000 people, and we've got a 10% unemployment rate. I assume y'all have a little bit more people because you're a little bigger than us and you got a little bit more stuff going on with the Walmart and all of that. We don't have nothing. But imagine my hand is the whole population. Every molecule of my hand is the population of Union County. Okay, now we got 10% unemployment rate. 10% of my hand is unemployed. Well, 15 jobs would pretty much employ the fingernail on my pinky. Uh, I'm that I'm sorry, but that's not going to help us any. And I would assume that the jobs they're offering over here in Baker in Bradford County would be equivalent to what they're offering to us. Um, also, um, on public record from previous Union County meetings, um, I had addressed our county commissioners about the radioactivity in the well water that could be that could become a problem. There is a document that I placed on file from a lady in um, in down south in Fort Lonesome, um, where she's wished to remain anonymous. But the document, which you can find on the Union County public records from our meetings, basically says that since the mines opened out, you know, around her home in Fort Lonesome. The radioactive, the toxicity, the radioactive toxicity levels of her well that feeds her house, her drinking water, where a normal level would be 15, her drinking water is radioactive somewhere between 20 to 30 something. Now, the well, her irrigation well, which waters her livestock and her garden, is in the hundreds. Okay, now these ground monitoring wells that might I remind you were put in illegally and then permits were applied for retroactively um, were dug for 15 to 55 feet. Um, I'm sorry, but a lot of our wells that we drink from are a lot deeper than that. They keep saying it's not going to affect our wells because they're going to go from a deeper level of the aquifer. Well, I don't know if you know how the aquifer works, but imagine a clear drinking glass, okay? You got a clear drinking glass, and you got a straw all the way down to the bottom, okay? You put a paper towel a little ways up from the bottom, and you leave a space. You put another paper towel, and then you've got the rest of the glass. You put a straw at the top level of that glass. That's your drinking well water. That straw at the bottom is the well, is the well where they're gonna be drawing the water for their operations. Now you take that, you take and drink the water from the bottom of that, what's gonna happen to the water at the top? It's gonna go down. So that's our wells, that's our rivers, that's our lakes, that's our ponds, where we, you know, where we grow, where we uh, cultivate fish to sell for for our income and where we enjoy and that's the springs because once it goes away from the top the aquifer is going to start drawing from around and underneath so, um, last thing last thing please is um, our area is already at a very high risk for sinkholes and when you start drawing all that water out of the aquifer it's just going to cause even more sinkholes thank you thank you Steve, P I E Z E N, <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> I could read it. I could read it, but I couldn't say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Dr. Steve Pachenik. I live at 222 Southeast Fifth Avenue, Melrose. I don't miss that bad. <laughs> well, it's not bad. I've been called worse. Yeah. Uh, I'm a medical doctor. 
I'm a physician trained in uh, New York and Boston area in the north. And I was asked to come here because uh, Commissioner Riddick was very concerned about something I knew nothing about. I knew nothing about it here in Bradford County, but ironically, I came from Montana. And in Montana, we had had the same problem that you have right now. We had mining companies come in. They promised us the newest techniques, and guess what happened? Kids got sick. I began to see children with asthma, recalcitrant asthma. We started seeing genetic abnormalities. We saw neurological problems. Why? Because the phosphate in the system knocks out the oxygen, and what you get is red algae. And when you get red algae and fungus, you start getting a very serious medical problem. That medical problem not only encumbers me as a physician, but unfortunately all of you as commissioners. Because the minute you're forewarned, as I'm telling you now, but I would like to bring in the former assistant surgeon general, because I didn't know this was going to be a formal meeting, but not atypical of the mining companies. They come out under the radar. And by the way, I work for our government and intelligence, so I know exactly how they work. I've seen these companies all over the world. I've seen them in China, but China doesn't need their phosphorus. I've seen them in, in Syria. Let me go back to the illness. The illnesses are so severe that we barely can treat them. We don't have antifungal medication. We don't have the antibiotics that can treat it. So basically now the entire county is on notice for medical malpractice if anything should happen or asthma arises or gastrointestinal problems. And believe me, if you think Flint, Michigan is a problem, you have not seen what can happen to Bradford County. Each one of you individually will be sued. The company will be sued. There will not only be civil suits, as you see in Flint, Michigan, there will be criminal suits. Because you have to take the necessary time to call in the appropriate physicians. And believe me, I've been trained at Harvard, I trained at Cornell, but I'm still not the appropriate physicians. We have in Bradford County the former Assistant Surgeon General of the United States, and she's never been called forth here. Shame on you. Shame on all of you. You have professors of medicine in Melrose. They've never been called up. If Danny hadn't called me by chance, I wouldn't have even been here. I wouldn't have even known about this problem. But a mining company is a declaration of war. It is not simply a declaration of business. In every country I've been in where water is an issue, that becomes a declaration of war. Why? I was sent to Syria on behalf of our government just before the Civil War. Contrary to what you think, the Civil War in Syria has nothing to do with religion. What did it have to do with? It had to do with water. The water in Damascus was depleting the water down below Damascus in homes in Hamas, where I was interrogated by the Assyrian interrogation process, showed me exactly how little water they had. So everybody fled right up to Damascus as they would flee away from here to other places. What eventually happened? A civil war. Do not think this is a benign effort on your part. <coughs> there are so many layers of issues that you will have to deal with, medical, political, economic and legal. So I ask you, as a physician and as a member of Bradford County and as a proud citizen of this county, think about what you're doing. Take the one-year moratorium. To say that a moratorium is not necessary is absurd, if not just arrogant and stupid. And that's what you're going to need, even for the legal reason. I can assure you that chemical company is as crooked as the day is long. And there's no question in my mind. And if you think I happen to be a liberal, let me tell you what my former position was. I was the deputy assistant secretary for Nixon, Reagan, Ford, Bush, and the military. So the minute you start that plant, you're going to have a far more serious problem than you imagine. I will not swim in the water where the phosphate will decrease the amount of oxygen. That will not happen. I guarantee you. Thank you. Thank you. Wheeler.
Good evening. I'm Mary Helen Wheeler. I'm at 1380 uh, Southeast Fifth Avenue, Melrose, Bradford County. And I'm going to give you another layer of that. Um, I am an educator, and I've been teaching in this North Florida for 31 years, middle school. As a matter of fact, so that makes me pretty fearless. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> bulletproof. <laughs> bulletproof, as a matter of fact, and um, as a result of that too, um, I also ran for Congress uh, in 2014, and it was District Three, which included this this um, county and also the county Hamilton County. And so I did some touring up around in the Hamilton County area, and I saw what the phosphate state mining had done to that area up there as well. Now, because I teach kids in middle school, I'm an art teacher, so I tell them 100 times a day, turn the water off, turn the water. You don't need that much water for a little bitty brush to get your hands clean. And I'm trying to convince them that water is going to be a real issue for them in their future. I have been working uh, water issues for 12 years now, from the St. John's River all the way over to the Gulf. Um, I worked in Levy County for 10 years and had quite a few friends over there, some of them quite notorious uh, fishermen over there. And um, so across this whole district, I've been concerned about water and whether we're going to have free and w um, um, clean water that will sustain us through the rest of our lives and the lives of our children and the faces of kids that I see. And so I would ask you, you know, I... You know, rather than have the moratorium, I, you know, in, in my druthers, I just say forget it. No, just, you know, don't, don't even think about it. One of the things, too, that Bradford County is going to have to, particularly Stark, is going to have to address, and, and I'm beginning to, as I've gotten more political, begun to connect the dots. Um, internationally, the Trans-Pacific uh, Project is going to affect Florida greatly, greatly. Uh, the 301 corridor that uh, the I-75 connector they're talking about now, uh, it's going to affect 301. That's going to be the one, the first places they look. So they're going to be widening these roads through here too. Florida, as we know it, as we've come to learn to love it, um, is going to change greatly because of the transportation of goods out of the state of Florida. We're going to become a conduit for exporting goods. This phosphate mine is probably going to be one of those things that they're exporting here. So um, I grew up in Kentucky. I've I spent quite a bit of time in eastern Kentucky. You may be able to tell from my the way I'm talking, Hazard, Harlan, all those places up in those areas. And I've watched the mines uh, take down the mountains up there. I also worked in a children's welfare agency up there where those grown kids now that I taught many, many years ago are suffering from cancers and tumors, and their grandchildren are too because of the polluted waters up there. When you come into North Florida on I-75, the first thing you see off to your left is those phosphate mines. It's the ugliest thing you ever saw in your life. If you look over uh, Google Earth, over the titanium mines north of Keystone, it's uh, like a giant scar on the earth. These places are very hard, if not impossible, to reclaim. Restoring, that will never restore, they can't put the mountaintops back on for sure. They, and, and you know, I often thought that it would take an act of God for us to try to get our heads on straight to kind of fix this stuff. And now what we're seeing are the earthquakes in Japan and Ecuador, um, the earthquakes that we're seeing even in Oklahoma with the fracking. You know, it, you know I, I read the Bible. I know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I know what happens if we don't take care of what we have been given to take care of, including our children. You know, it's not the endangered species of the thing, the two-leggeds and the, I mean, the four-leggeds. It's the two-leggeds that I'm concerned about. So I would urge you say no completely no completely but I understand in the in in trying to be good neighbors and to care about your communities and the people who live here you know have to give everybody the consideration that they deserve and I understand that I grew up in a town of 500 people so I understand that but at the same time it's a different world it's totally different now and the things the risk that we are taking endanger our well-being so thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Miss Debbie Davy. Hi, how are you? Hi. 
My name is Debbie Davey. I live at 12556 Southwest 51st Terrace, Lake Butler. Actually, I'm Worthington Springs, Lake Butler address. I live down 121 across from uh, the mining area. I can actually stand on my property line and throw a rock over the fence, and I think is severely close. I've lived there 20 years. I'm a property owner. I raised my children in Union County. In 79, my family moved to Bradford County from Duval County, so I've been in this area for 38 years. And my children, you know, went to Union County schools. My granddaughter's going to Union County school. And I have a high concern, you know, with the, with the radon and, you know, of course, you know, living close, you know, that close to the mining area. And my concerns is, you know, y'all's decision here, you know, of the, you know, the moratorium, because I feel that, you know, the impact of, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all's decision, you know, will have an impact, you know, on, you know, Union County. And, um, of course, you know, the, uh, I watched a video where they said that they're going to, you know, dig deeper, you know, for the wells. My well goes down 170 feet. You know, how far are they going to dig? You know, and, and, you know, of course, the aquifer, you know, is our sole source of water, you know, here in the state of Florida. You know, and the radon, you know, is one of my big concerns, too. And I know you all keep hearing all the same stuff over and over. But, you know, we all like to, you know, stress the fact of all this and our concerns and the effect it's going to have on our families. And it wouldn't be that big of a deal if it wasn't so close to, you know, us citizens and our homes. And, you know, it's just, you know, ridiculous, you know, that people that it's going to affect. And, you know, these families are not even in the general area and that you know and we got to sit here and you know suffer the consequences and you know i'm re you know i'm here to retire you know i'm not going anywhere else like i said i've been here for 20 years and i just think it's ridiculous and it's just uncalled for and i i just hope y'all make the right decision do your research and take all this in consideration, and please, please, really do take it in consideration, and do your research, and, you know, redo the moratorium. You know, Union County's got it passed, and what y'all decide is going to have an impact on our county. And another thing, too, I was down at the Santa Fe River down there in Worthington Springs, you know, our, our park that they redid, you know, for Worthington Springs with my granddaughter. Where my children, I took them down there, you know, and we swam down there. You know, I watched my kids play down there. And I just sat there and I looked at that river, you know, and how peaceful it is and watched my granddaughter, you know, play down there in that river. And I, I just pictured it, you know, with this phosphate mining going on and how it's going to look if this gets passed and what that river is going to look like in the future. You know, is it going to be dried up, you know, and, and the trees that's on the banks? You know, because my granddaughter lost her float, and it was floating down the river, and we were trying to get a rope, you know, to catch it. You know, it was just a $1 floaty, and I just decided, you know, to heck with it, just let it go. But I just sat there and looked at the trees and stuff, you know, along the banks and, and the growth on it and just wondering, you know, if this gets, you know, they do the mining, what's it going to look like, you know, down the road? It's, it's, it's going to be pitiful. So... Y'all, please take this in consideration, and I hope y'all do the right thing. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Michael Edward Kearns. Michael Kearns uh, went on to Minnesota. Recently uh, purchased a piece of property here in Florida. Going to close tomorrow or, or Monday. I've had a survey done on, a line, on the property. The survey says my property is 1,000 feet deep and extends into the lake, which is Hampton Lake. 
I can go a thousand feet without touching water. Why? How many of our lakes do we have to lose to the mining before we realize this isn't there? I'm from Minnesota. Big thing in Minnesota, Wisconsin area, rack sand. They can't make a dollar until oil is $50 a barrel. Yesterday it was 43 And that is, in the last couple months, has come up. So when Winona shipped 400,000 tons of frack sand on the river barges, we're not talking railroad to Williston. We're talking south. But when they shipped 400,000 tons in 2014, when the frack sand industry went down, they shipped zero in 2015. And there's frack sand lying all over the city of Winona. It's worthless. Talk about phosphate. And for anybody in here, as far as depth of wells and fertilizer, ladies, I apologize to any of you who've had a miscarriage. Had a friend, seven miscarriages before they found out it was fertilizer contamination deeper than any of the wells you're talking. Everything that you hear bad <coughs> is what you get from mining. Moratoriums, there are many places did pass moratoriums on a frac sand mining. Boy, it saved those people. They don't have a bunch of sand and torn up land waiting for an industry to recover. And I don't know the figures, but if the price of phosphate's going down and it's and the market's not there, how are you gonna make the money? When they do when they do a billion dollars worth of, of uh damage to your county and then all of a sudden they can't sell it, who's gonna pick up the price tag when they pack up and leave? You Thank don't you. need you don't need phosphate mining in Bradford County. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank yes, sir. you. That's all the public comment. I have two more public comment cards, but they specifically say that they want to speak on item number five. <coughs> I'm one of those. <coughs> I could certainly give my remarks now. Yes, ma'am. Which, which one are you? Michelle Moretti. Okay, good. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't. That's I, okay. I, I, uh, good evening, for the record. I'm Michelle Moretti. I live at 7671 Southwest, 117th place in Lake Butler, but that's unincorporated Union County, Worthington Springs. And I was asked to come by a, about a dozen Bradford County residents after speaking at Union County's Monday night meeting, where, as you know, they adopted a 12-month moratorium. <coughs> Now, as a resident of Union County, the Santa Fe River Basin, and North Central Florida, I urge this commission to reconsider its decision to not adopt a moratorium on phosphate mining. Permits for 12 months. You should adopt the mor moratorium because this will actually stop the clock so that anyone cannot be accused of changing the rules in the middle of the game. And you won't be accused of being biased one way or the other. I applaud HPS assurances that there will be no gypsum stacks, no clay settling ponds, no fertilizer processing plants, no heavy vehicle hauling, and that only small parcels will be mined before they proceed to reclaim it and go further. And if that is truly the case, then I can't imagine why HPS would so vehemently oppose a moratorium to give Bradford County citizens and this board sufficient time to put these guarantees in writing in the form of specific ordinances that will preserve your collective health and welfare, not to mention meet your moral and legal obligations to the communities and businesses downstream who will definitely be impacted by what happens here. The moratorium period will also ensure that nobody sneaks a permit in under the wire. And we're seeing some evidence that this may be going on now. It will allow this board 
to fully and fairly consider the myriad issues you will have to consider before making a truly informed decision. The period will allow you to trust but verify. And since HPS has advertised that the mine construction won't begin until 2017 and there'll be no extraction until 2018, a moratorium should have no prejudicial effect on the company. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, it's been said that those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. It's undisputed that the phosphate mining history is long and tarried in the state of Florida. It includes a, le a legacy of Superfund sites and environmental degradation. History also shows that nearly every commission that has actually considered the issue before you, if they haven't banned phosphate mining altogether in their counties, has at least enacted well-considered specific ordinances to protect their citizens and environments from the dramatic effect that, again, history shows usually accompanies phosphate mining. History also reminds us that there has been no actual phosphate mining in Bradford County's past. The phosphate mining process is very different from the sand mining process that DuPont currently runs in its operations. Any existing zoning that permits mining only exists by default because the issue has never been fully and fairly considered in this county. And with that history in mind, the record shows that the North Florida Regional Planning Council has explicitly warned this commission that your existing bare bones regulations are wholly insufficient to deal with issues you're likely to encounter according to Florida's actual history with phosphate mining ventures. History also tells us that the phosphate mining industry has suffered boom and bust cycles, leaving many Florida ghost towns in its wake. The industry recently consolidated from several hundred companies down to only a few major international players. This begs the question of how a local startup with no direct mining experience in our unique geographic terrain can even begin to compete with other large-scale producers, especially during a worldwide slowdown in phosphate demand and declining phosphate prices. It is your duty to at least consider whether HPS would be able to meet its extraordinary environmental commitments if their novel experimental techniques fail or they prove to be unprofitable. And also, please bear in mind that much of the land that HPS in their mining portfolio has acquired has not been in their families for hundreds of years. <clears throat> Recent history shows that many, many hundreds of acres, especially those along the New River, were acquired by HPS interests only within the past 12 to 18 months. It's ironic that their land is adjacent to about 100 acres that was recently acquired by the Alachua Conservation Trust, short, very close to it, for preservation in perpetuity. And no doubt you will be hearing from that organization and many others like it whose downstream investments will be affected by the decisions made in Bradford County. And finally, wouldn't it be naive for us not to consider the possibility that once mining permits are finally granted, the local mining landowner family's goodwill will disappear. Is it conceivable that HPS could flip its mineral rights to the highest bidder? Is it even foreseeable, is it foreseeable that after, say, some environmental disaster, this new inexperienced company would be forced to forfeit their mining industries inter interest, maybe to an international conglomerate, which would be surely a more formidable foe. If these, these situations are even remotely possible, and Florida history shows that they're not only possible, that they are likely, then this county must have sufficient ordinances in place before such drastic land use changes have begun 
the moratorium will allow your organization to fully and fairly consider the enormous amount of information that you will, I promise you, be encountering before you make a final decision on this monumental issue. So I urge you to please set the 12-month moratorium process in motion. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I hope I'm saying it right. Ms. Gibson, you still want to wait till? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I just want to make sure. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, you, uh. My name is John Lee. I live at uh, 8932 Southeast Fifty Avenue in Hempen. I got one question. I've been sitting here watching everybody. I'm 50 years old. I never thought that we would be buying water out of Jeep store. When I was growing up, we could drink the water. Listen to these people, phosphate mines, <clears throat> all they're going to do is mess our water up. Y'all can see what DuPont had done to the land where they had mined out there on 230. That land is no good for nothing. Not even grow trees on, Eddie. Mm -hmm. In the commercial, y'all know that. Why are we going to destroy what little bit that we do do around here? You in the logging business? Mr. Rudd in the cabinet building, he used woods. Why are y'all even thinking about opening a project of mine? Y'all see what it does on 441, uh, 41 going toward Georgia? That just don't make sense. I mean, that's that's me, and I ain't nothing but a dumb country boy, so what am I? I mean... That common sense would tell y'all we don't need this in our county. All right, appreciate it, Barton. <laughs> well, uh, before you move on, if there's no more comments, I I just like to say one thing, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I I gotta say this um to everybody. Um, be honest with you, because. Uh, after listening to the budget workshop meeting audio um, several times, uh, I just want to take this time to apologize to the board and to the citizens for not being clear on the request for a mining moratorium and why it's so important. Uh, the moratorium is not trying to change the rules in the middle of the game. The first time I heard about mining was the week of January 21st. I just want to make that clear two days before it was printed in the Telegraph. In the February meeting, we heard from concerned citizens. In the March meeting, I asked the board to seek help from the North Central Florida Regional Planning Council. March 29th, I believe, we received the Planning Council's recommendation. Um, and with the workshop plan uh, for March 31st, knowing that I would be in Washington, um, with the Planning Council for our Monday, April 4th meeting, I just want to make this clear. I'm the one that asked if we could put the request on the budget workshop meeting agenda for Thursday night, March 31st, um, to get the process started on the mor moratorium before any mining applications were submitted. Um, this, was, this is too important, and I did not want to wait until this meeting tonight this is, this is the most important decision we will make. And quoting from the board, we know nothing about phosphate mining. Starting this process, the moratorium would take three public hearings, as you all know, at least 60 days. We all said we need more workshops. The moratorium would allow the board time to hear from both sides, research, and get as much information as we can, get the best recommendations, and be able, this is the most important part, and be able to stop the moratorium process at any time during that one year we want to. No applications are submitted at this time. This is not hindsight. This is doing what we were voted to do, make the best decisions for Bradford County. And again, I apologize because I, I really thought by, if I'd have been more clear and made this request clear to the board, that the moratorium process would take 60 days, three public hearings, 
and at any time we could stop it, that that we would have voted it in and went forward with it. So I do apologize, um, but at the same time, I it was too important to wait because, like I said, I knew I would not be at our Monday meeting on the 4th. Um, I would be in Washington with the Planning Council uh, for the entire week. So just to clear up any anything from anybody, um, yes, it was it's my fault, if you want to call it my fault. I'm the one that made the request uh, for that budget uh, at the budget meeting for this to be brought up. Um, I, I thought it would have been the best decision to do. Um, I wish I'd have waited till tonight and had the room filled like we do now. But um, anyway, I was trying to get it moved forward and at least just get the get the process started is all I wanted to do. You can't vote on a moratorium in the same night. So board, that's I apologize to y'all because I did not make it clear. So I just I have to say that because I've had I can't even tell you how many calls on this. So I just want to make it. Clear. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I do. And, and I don't want anybody to misconstrue this. I do I do really respect what Mr. Reddick said. I personally think that that should have come from Mr. Coons because his weight were brought more to that urgency and the need than you, Mr. Dane. And so uh, I, you know, again, a lot of this is, is true that we're, we're, we're still trying to Kind of footing to how how to how to deal with this and be honest and uh, open. We've I don't think anybody on this board has ever said we're going to do this or we're in favor of that. I think we all the time we've been listening. We we we've been trying to get information. We've been trying to schedule meetings. So so I don't think it was ever a time when any person on this board thought, well, I want the phosphate mine. I want this, and I will say that. When, when I talked to them individual, it was nothing promised to me. It was simply a conversation. And I will always make a decision to do what's best for the Bradford County citizens. That's, and what's best for our economy, our, our, our ecosystem. Uh, so I don't think, sometimes I think that the, the, the mere wanting us to just do something is still we have to look at everything and we're going to do i believe that this board would always do what's right i really do and and i don't i don't think we would try to make any decision that was not in the best interest of bradford county residents and our entire ecosystem and and i just i want to make sure that all of you know that because most of you are not from bradford county mm -hmm. but we are and so we we never said that we was we were favored one way or the other not one board member, but we wanted to hear everything. Ma'am, ma'am. We wanted to hear everything and get as much knowledge as we could, give them the same, give, give the people that wanted to do this the opportunity to hear from them to see what they talked about. And so I want to make sure that, that people know that that's how this board feels about it. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes. And so I, I just want to make sure y'all don't think that we've already got in the bed with them and we were going to do what they say. Uh, I could care less about money. I've been broke all my life. So, Amen. Um, you know, it, it's not, it's never been about money. Uh, it's never been about money. It's, it's always been about doing the right thing for the right reason. I would, <clears throat> Mr. Coons, have you got anything that you'd like to add, mm. sir? To maybe we could ask you, sir, or you can answer or and, and mr eddie if you don't mind to, to take out for mr coons that was also my fault because i called mr coons we got the um what the recommendation from the planning council um i believe on the um 29th um i called mr coons at that time had a bunch of questions on their recommendation um and i asked him i said hey do you think you can make the uh, budget workshop meeting at that time, he told me he could not make it. He already had another plan, uh, already had plans for that evening. And uh, again, knowing we would not be here for that Monday meeting, um, I, j I just felt like it was too important to wait. And um, hindsight's 2020, but um, as we're going to find out in a lot of issues. Thank you. But um, anyway, so I just wanted to take up for that's why Mr. Coons wasn't here. Right. Go ahead, Mr. Coons, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Scott Coons, Executive Director of the North Central Florida Regional Planning Council. And we're an association of local governments in North Central Florida, which Bradford County is a member of that association, and Commissioner Reddick does serve on our board representing the county. Our mission is very simple. It's to improve the quality of life of the citizens in the 13 counties across North Central Florida. And we do that through four activities. Coordinating growth management, protecting regional resources, promoting economic development, and providing technical assistance to uh, member local governments. This board uh, requested our assistance with your staff to uh, sit down and look at your comprehensive plan and land development regulations as it relates to mining. In response to your request, we did meet with your staff several weeks ago, and based on the uh, preliminary review of our office and your staff, uh, it was determined that your existing comprehensive plan, which was adopted uh, under the Growth Management Act 1985 and 1991, has uh, one policy concerning mining. It includes a mining map in the, in the future land use map series, which are areas where there are known phosphate reserves in the county. Your land development regulations, which implement your comprehensive plan, have one and a half pages and a uh, several hundred page document uh, relating to special permits for mining. At the time your comprehensive plan was prepared and adopted and your regulations uh, adopted to implement that plan, based on the best available information from the Florida Geological Survey, uh, their assessment of phosphate rock that is here in Bradford County, that due to its quality uh, compared to other deposits in the state and the difficulty in extracting it, that it was not economically feasible for mining to occur in Bradford County, it would not occur uh, in, the, in the near future at that time. So conditions have changed, uh, apparently in the last uh, 20 to 25 years, and it's our recommendation to this board uh, that you pause uh, and take a deliberate and careful look at your comprehensive plan policy and map as it relates to mining and your land development regulations which implement uh, that plan uh, and to do the necessary research uh, to evaluate uh, plan policies and, and regulations that other counties, particularly in Florida, uh, that have, mos have had mos phosphate mining for decades have in place and what the best practices are in terms of managing uh, that resource and protecting the health, safety, and welfare of your citizens. So that is our recommendation. It still is a recommendation of the board that would be appropriate to uh, consider enacting a, a one-year moratorium to take the necessary time uh, for this board and your staff and the public and our office uh, and the interest of parties uh, to work together to develop uh, policies and uh, possible revisions to the mining map and additional regulations to adequately safeguard uh, the county and its resources. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll move on to item number three, consent agenda. Does everybody have a chance to look at the consent agenda? So moved. Got a motion second. here. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed likewise. 5 vote to approve. Item number four is approved payment of the bills. Commissioner Sellers. I reviewed the bill and I would recommend that we pay them. Got a motion to hear a second. Second. Got a motion to second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? 5 vote to pay the bills. <clears throat> Item number five, reconsider recommendation by North Central Florida Planning Council to undertake the process of implication of a 12-month moratorium on the access of a new mining application. Brenda Thornton, concerned citizen. Thank you for having um, me on the agenda. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate uh, Mr. Riddick's um, explanation. Why I'm here is because I was listening to the audio of the March 31st emergency meeting, and I want to ask the commissioners to reconsider the vote that was put on the agenda, um, one for the lack of advertisement, um, one day notice was not acceptable. Citizens of this county have been concerned. Obviously, you've heard so many tonight. Um, I was at the February 18th meeting. I think we all need a drink of water. Water? <laughs> okay. So, um, so Eddie Lewis and Danny Riddick shared on the uh, at the emergency meeting that they've been getting numerous calls from their constituents on the ph phosphate mining. 
and I recently spoke to Kenny Thompson. He said he was getting four to five calls a day. A day. Um, so um, my, I, I want you to reconsider. Um, my question um, is, you know, why wasn't it addressed at the April 4th meeting? I think Danny answered that with the fact that he wasn't here. Um, and I've been following the, the issue in, in Union County where it's taken them several months to even bring the moratorium up for vote because they've had to have two public hearings. And in seeking an ordinance for a one-year moratorium, they'll have to be, is it two or three public hearings on that? Three, isn't it? Three. Three. Three public hearings um, in order for you to be able to vote. Do you vote at the third one? Can you vote at the third one? Okay, gotcha. Okay, so give the people who are concerned about the phosphate mining time to share their concerns. Um, I have two people that are gonna speak. One is Mary Lee Gibson from our Santa Fe River and um, Mark Lyons from Baker County who um, worked on a moratorium over there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Will, on that vote at the end of the three bill, you can extend that right on and right on, correct? Yeah. I, I don't understand the question. Yeah, what? I don't understand, I don't, I don't understand the question. At the end of the three months, if you wanted to extend, if you didn't put a year more to it, you could actually keep that vote right on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I understand that. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. Thank you. Thank you. I know this has uh, been a meeting that you weren't anticipating, so I appreciate all your time. Um, although it was on the agenda, because I did happen to see it there. Uh, what I brought today, actually, I sent you all an email with um, documentation on why we're concerned about the Santa Fe River. Our Santa Fe River, and do you need my address at all? Would you like it? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. 2070 Southwest County Road 138. Fort White, Florida, 32038. Um, I represent a group. I'm a policy director for our Santa Fe River. We're a citizens group where we engage the public and we educate the public on concerns that affect the Santa Fe River and its basin. And that is why I'm sometimes in your meeting room, which I appreciate being here. And under these circumstances, we, of course, know that we have a phosphate mine coming or considering coming into this area. And so when I started to do my research, um, of course, I went to the water management district first and primarily, and I got these maps made. These are LIDAR maps. They show where water is located in the basin. And so wherever you see blue, you're going to see water. Green is low basin. That's wa watershed, wetlands. And then when it gets a little orange and a little uh, yellow, it gets a little higher. However, you all are unique. So, you know, you have a <coughs> tremendous amount of wetlands above and beyond what you see in blue. And you know that. We've talked about it before, but you have this going on here. So in order to mine here, you will be impacting your watershed. <coughs> now, it's low ground or high ground. This is what the scope you're seeing now. So this is a white, these white areas also look like, uh, or are rather white wetlands. And they're high ground. And you're clay. Most people that live in this area understand what I'm talking about. People that live down where I live in the sandy soil. So, we also, at, uh, in Santa Fe River, we also have a minimum <coughs> flow and level, which deals with water. You've heard a lot about water tonight. We have a BMAP, Best, management action, or Best manage, management action Plan, which was established, too. Um, it has to do with nutrient loading and how we use our land around the rivers. We also have an OFW, Outstanding Florida Waterway, that has a huge amount of protection in its place. And then we also have... Uh, Minimum flow, BMAP. Oh, ah, most important one, area of critical concern. And that has to do with our protected species, our endangered species on the Santa Fe River and threatened species. However, the map that y'all, so y'all understand, the blue area that goes up in this direction, that's the new river. This is the Santa Fe River here. So the new river is a tributary into the Santa Fe River. This is why we're concerned because this, uh, mining interest straddles our river. 
So if we have any sort of impacts to this waterway, we will be impacted. And we being the Santa Fe River, we say we, we give it a humanness because it really has no voice except for us and the citizens. So we have wetlands. We're concerned about it. The south side of the river, of the new river, is uh, Bradford County. The north side is Union. So you can see kind of where we're at with these uh, black line delineations. Will you um, go to the next slide? One thing I just found out, because there's new research to be had all the, all the time, and this is another reason why we're urging you to do a moratorium, because there's just so much information to be had. This is showing a water resource cautionary area. This means whoever extracts water in this area is going to have a very difficult time getting water from the water management district. And most farmers or people that use a lot of water know exactly what I'm talking about. They will reduce your amount of water that you want to get um, considerably these days because we don't have that kind of water anymore. And especially with the divide, I think some of you know what I'm talking about with the divide of water and it happens to be in this area. So I urge you. <laughs> To do a 12-month moratorium, you have a lot to learn. And certainly, Mr. Coons, a lot of this information, I would imagine, would end up being in this LDR and comprehensive plan report or, or uh, changes to your LDRs and comprehensive plans because these are the things that matter. These are legislative. These are protection in place. These will give you uh, the legal stance that you can actually deny this type of thing and, and urge you to consider that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Good evening. Thank you, evening. Chairman and Board, for the opportunity to speak. Um, I would just like to ask the audience by a raise of hands, who would have been here at the emergency meeting had you seen an advertisement or have known about the meeting? Thank you. That, that's all I want to know on that. Um, does anyone on this board know when your LDRs were put into place? What year? Or the comprehensive plan? Uh, the reason I ask that is because since your LDRs and your comps have been put into place, we have, uh, these things have happened. In uh, 2008, the upper Santa Fe River, a minimum flow level was set for that river. Uh, in 2013, there was a low minimum flow level set. In 2012, the Santa Fe River Basin, there was a management action plan to make it a outstanding Florida waterway. And then in 2007, the Federal Clean Water Act uh, designated some parts of that as area critical concern for habitat and protected species. Um, so you've got a document that is ancient. Um, I went on the state's comp LDR site, and since your comp plan and LDRs have been looked at or revisited or revised, I quit counting at 30-something times the state has revised since yours were put into place. Because we're a growing state, our counties are growing, there's a lot of mining activities in the state, uh, those things are constantly being watched. I think they're on a two-year plan for update to look, to look and examine those uh, documents. I would like to talk about what we did over in Baker County. Um, we had a sand mining company come in and apply. They applied for a permit with the county for a special exemption to zone for zoning to mine in agricultural areas. And there was a huge uprising by the citizens when they wanted five million gallons a day out of our aquifer to mine the sand. So we, uh, it was a two-year process. I forget how many meetings we had, how many workshops, how many, it, it, it was a debacle. Um, everyone was burnt out, they were tired of it. But the reason our process took two years to look at their application and get a determination was because we were in the same boat y'all were in. Our LDRs and comps were so out of place. The LDRs compromised the comp. The comp contradicted the LDRs. So as we went through the process of going through this permitting process with them, with the county for the zoning change, these problems would arise in the LDRs. 
So as citizens, and we had hired an attorney, we hired a, our, our group hired an, a land use attorney, we hired a scientist, we hired a geologist, we spent about $25,000 of our own money. And what we found out was the LDRs were inadequate and they needed uh, looking at. And we didn't know, we didn't know that they could be looked at. We thought it was county law and it was there. So as we work with the LDR and we're fortunate enough, we pay a planning director in Baker County. We have a planning director, we have a planning director secretary, and then we have a five member planning board. And I think you guys sit as the, your LPA board because y'all don't have a board or for the LPA. Um, so we started working with them and we were told that well, we can't change the rules right now or we can't look at the LDRs because we have an active application from a company. So we had to sit and wait. We went through the process. Uh, at the end of two years, we had our monumental meeting. It started at 5.30 p.m. and we left the courthouse at quarter till four in the morning. And that was mainly because we had six corporate lawyers that talked for five hours. <laughs> um, so, what ended up happening was the county turned down the zoning request for the special exception to mine on agricultural land because of uh, something to do with the urban growth on the comprehensive land use map. Um, so after that, we approached our zoning director about doing the moratorium. We understood we had to do a moratorium because you can't change the rules and have someone applying. And I've, I've heard this with this, well, what about 30 days, what about 60 days, what about 90 days. Um, going into it, our county did a year and um, because of the planning council only meets once a month, because of public advertisement of two weeks, and then the back and the forth and the workshops, uh, we got to the end of the first year and we were halfway through our elements in our LDRs. We weren't even near finished. So our board had to continue it for the second year because this is very complex and detailed documentations and you're setting forth law and future use of your land in your county. And so you want to take your time and you want to make sure it's done right. If you're going to revise it, you, you need to make sure it's done right. So right now we are three quarters through our LDRs. We're still having workshops. Um, I think maybe the next one coming up next month, we will be able to say we're through with them. They can do a rough draft. Then the rough draft has to go to the commission for approval. There's another two weeks and it has to fit into their schedule. So that's the reason I think Mr. Coons asked for a year is because it, it, it's a very detailed, long drawn out process. Um, you may go through them quickly. You may resolve them and you can lift the moratorium at any time. Um, it, it just depends on how their date, Mr. Coons, because y'all are dealing with another, the planning council out of the county, how, how those meetings are going to come together and how your, um, your notifications are going to be able to work out your time on that. Um, the other thing, I'm going to kind of be all over the board here. I just have some things I want to, want to touch and address. Um, Ashley, Ms. Sellers, I have a question for you. Are you employed other than the county board here? I am rep for the school board. For the school board. Oh, great. Um, were you aware or did you know of a meeting at the school board with Mr. Hazen? I did. And were you present at that meeting? Yes, sir, I was at a school board meeting that night. Okay. So were you informed of the outcome or what that meeting was about? Didn't ask them. Okay. I asked the question that night how many people they had in a public meeting here, sir. Right. Um, I was just curious about that because I, I unfortunately too missed any notification on the emergency hearing and we weren't able to make it. And when I went back and listened to that audio, um, quite honestly, I, I'm not a mean person. I, I don't like to make waves, but I was a little upset. Um, if it had been in a courtroom situation and I had been an attorney, I would have challenged you for leading the witness. Because if you go back and you listen to that tape, but if you go back and listen to that tape, hey, hey, listen. Yeah, that, okay, awesome. so then what happened after that is I, I want to say that uh, I want to talk about Mr. Hazen talking about the Northeast Florida Planning Council. He said they were outsiders. 
he called them activists, and he said you know, they were outsiders. Well, Mr. Coons is here tonight, and I just wanted to get it on the record that your planning council, Northeast Florida Planning Council, is your right hand. Uh, they are a part of your county. If you read Webster and you define outsider, uh, it is one who is excluded from or does not belong to a group or association or a set, one who is isolated or detached from activities or concerns of the community, or a contestant given little chance of winning in a long shot. Yep. I, I just want to say your planning council is your right hand when it comes to your LDRs and your comps. And I, I don't think, because in Union County what happened, the, the moratorium process was hijacked by HPS because it's not really about HPS. It's about your mining elements in your LDR. And it doesn't matter if it's phosphate, sand, titanium, quarry rock, diamonds. It, it covers all mining. You have to pause it in order to look at those elements because you can't be changing the rules and accepting applications. And so, with that said, I just would like a reconsideration of, of this with Mr. Coons because Mr. Coons didn't do this just to be doing it. The planning council is very effective at what they do. They're there for counties like you. Um, if you can't afford to pay a uh, zoning director $80,000 a year and him a secretary for $32,000 a year, then you depend on him. And I just want to make the distinguished effort to the public that Mr. Coons and the Planning Council's not outsiders. They're a big part of this county. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going to be short. Um, so I would like to ask the commissioners to reconsider the vote that happened on March 31st and rescind the vote. Um, and I think that all that's needed um, for that to happen is any one of you can make that motion. Um, is that right, Mr. Sexton? Would that be correct? I don't think that the board can reconsider their decision from the last meeting because that has to happen on the same day that they made their decision but any commissioner can make a motion to rescind their previous decision on a particular issue but 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 you, but you also it was also brought up a while ago that we need to have three public hearings before you can do a moratorium so we screwed up to start with is that correct well no sir not with respect to what I think Ms. Thornton is saying, but I think if the board had, if at any point in the future the board decides it wants a moratorium, there'll have to be three public hearings. So, That's what I'm what, yeah. but in order for them to um, seek a moratorium, wouldn't they have to rescind that vote that they had at the March 31st meeting? That's correct. Okay. So I'm um, asking if anyone on the board would be willing to rescind their vote tonight. Ms. Thornton, what? As, as I said, when I've seen everybody here, um, I, I, I thought all this would come up after the public hearing. I know we've heard a lot from the public, and I appreciate that. I know we're going to hear a lot more on that Friday night. And um, I, myself, I think that would be the time, after we have that public hearing, would be the time to consider this, to reconsider this. So, but I'm not asking you to vote on creating the ordinance for the moratorium. I'm just asking you to free yourself up to where you can have another vote because if you, is it possible that if they rescind the vote, are they able to vote again at that, on that topic at the same meeting? I have three now. That wouldn't be right. Right, that, I know, I that, that is a workshop. So I will, I, workshop. No action was taken at a workshop, first of all. Well, at I the, mean, it would have to be tabled at the workshop. Discussed. Yeah. 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 The five people out there have said they are for this comp. They are for the mm -hmm. people in this comp. They are for the people in this room. All the, all the gates is not for the people in this room. 
say, I'm a man of my word. I will stand up and make the motion to rescind this vote. Is there a man up there or a woman that will do that? It's just, it's basically righting a wrong that Danny had admitted earlier and your North Florida Regional Planning Council um, director has suggested um, that you do seek a moratorium. So um, doing that tonight would free, I believe, am I correct? Well, he's thinking Will? read that if you okay. give me a second. Okay, got you. Commission action may be rescinded by a supermajority or four-fifth vote after a motion to reconsider has been, well, that's all it says with respect to rescinding an action previously taken. Any commissioner may, at the next regular commission meeting, move to rescind action previously taken. Okay. So what I said was, any commissioner here tonight could make a motion to rescind their previous action. So. I think. So Mr. any Lewis is anyone on this board could say it again. Say it again? What Mr. Lewis is trying to say in response to that is that he would prefer that to happen after the workshop. I don't want to speak for but him, then but that's just another delay on the ability to move forward may, may I speak yeah uh, everybody please yes may, sir go may ahead. I speak if okay you all know I was in Washington for a week the whole week I was in Washington all I did was discuss this phosphate mine with anybody up there I could get and there was people from all over all 50 states to be honest with you, when I came back, I've been doing all kind of research and study. I got the ordinance application for the Bartow mine, and I believe I even got your permit um, right here, a copy of it. If, if this is the right one, I searched all over trying to find it. It was um, filed, on, filed on February 5th, 2016, and actually uh, received on uh, March 7th. Um, as you can see, this is just the ordinance, it's 31 pages. I also went on the um, Polk County website or um, Hardy County website, pulled up their ordinances, it's 32 pages. I have read these things probably at least five times each on all of them. Trying to figure out, there's um, there's all kind of um, different, um, i got my notes right here, there's, um, there's different rules, different regulations, there's bonding. There is so many, so much important information in these that, like I said, I'm, I I made one comment to Will because I didn't want to get him too involved, but I, I made one comment to Will. I'd have to be an attorney and read this for a month to figure it out. Great. Here's the bottom line. Here's our permit fee for our uh, ordinance for Bradford County. The one man was correct. It's only two pages, right? which didn't take me very long to read. But, um, but anyway, I, I make all that and, um, and say all that to say this. The more I studied, the more I researched, the more I realized how much we need more research on this and more input from you and um, our, our, um, archaeologists. We, we, need, we just need more research, period, period. Um, because the one thing I did figure out after doing all this, any kind of mining will have a negative impact to someone I guarantee it right. and um, and with all that said um, and board I, I wrote I'll, I'll be honest I've been just jotting things down but with everything we've heard tonight and knowing and I feel terrible for this for uh, not making it really clear in that uh, special exception or the uh, workshop meeting um, so knowing that and knowing we need more time for the board um, and the citizens of Bradford County to research and learn more about the proposed uh, mining operation that HPS2 Enterprise is wanting to establish here. This would also give HPS time to finish their pilot study, which is very important, um, as well as it'll give us more time to gather factual information on the environmental impact. And with this, I'm making a motion that we rescind um, the motorcarium motion and I, I will also add the same thing mr. Sexton added this will take at, at least four-fifths of the board to pass okay. we got a motion to hear a second do I hear a second I'll say not a second thank you thank you
Any further discussion? Could I just ask one? Mr. Sexton, um, Robert's rule of order, it, I thought one of the three that um, made the motion was the only one that could rescind it. That's true, Ms. Sellers, for the motion to reconsider action previously taken, which is also the one that requires the board to take that up at the same meeting where the original okay. action was I was taken. just asking. Thank you so much. Yes, okay. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. If not, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. 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 Three, two, L. Thank you very much. Hold on, hold on. Please understand, we need to clarify how you voted for the rest. Okay. That's right. Correct. Okay. Huh? And no, it takes a four fifth. Thank you. I heard three votes. Yeah. Right. It takes four fifths. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm against it too. Okay. I mean, I'm. No, I'm not. I'm My name is Lila Sellers, and I'm not against it, ma'am. It's against. just the fact that we need to research, and we had planned on having a workshop. And at our last meeting, we said that we would have a workshop set. And that's what we've advertised. It came to us. Hey, hey. I have the floor, please. Thank you. That came to us as an emergency action item. We had nothing to do with that. And we have said from this board from the get go, we do not like emergency action items unless it's something that we have no control over. Mr. Danny was not here. He's admitted to that fault at this time. I think we need to study more. We're going to have a workshop next Friday night. I would hope each and every person would come out and speak so that the people from HSP or whoever can answer every question that we could not answer up here tonight. Would put, 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 no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. It's closed. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. 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 That's enough now. Hey, sir. That's so enough. Like that, that's exactly right. All right. So we got all right, the, the motion. Please, please. The mo is, no more conversation. No, 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 no more questions. Okay. It's a, it's a 3 2 vote. The moratorium still is not in place. We will move. Uh, can, can I make one more comment before we move on? It's the last comment. If we're not going to make the moratorium tonight, if we're not going to do anything to change it, can we at least say we're not going to accept any mining ap applications until after the the workshop on uh, April 29th? Well, I would hope not. I mean, I wouldn't think there would be one. Okay. I mean, I mean, I would, how can we deny? I mean, I don't, I don't know how you can deny. Miss Will. Miss Will. You can deny, you? deny the mm -hmm. application. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Until we Ms. Will. Ms. Will. Ms. Will. Ms. Will. Why are you going to fight? Yeah. Who fight? That doctor. You're out. Get him. Who is that guy? Dr. Steve Janet. Hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> let's let's all right, let's moving right along. Okay. Move moving along. Oh my lord. Hey, we Well, I wish That's you'd opinion, work that. That's a lie. That's a, hey, sir. Hey, good night, and you have a nice night. Yeah. Mm. Hey, ease on now, buddy. Ease on, partner. Just didn't let him go. Don't say anything. God damn. Just don't say Come on, let's anything. finish the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's move on. County, County Attorney Report, Mr. Will Sexton. Wait, Mr. Chairman, I'm, can I get some direction, some clarification from, from you or know. from the attorney? Was the motion to rescind the action at the March 31st meeting, which was not to, not to do a moratorium? So you, you have rescinded that vote. Is that correct? No. 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 Okay, that's why I need, that's why I need clarification. Need I, thought, yes, I thought that was his motion. So I need clarification, please. Yes. Okay. <laughs> 
What was your motion, Mr. Riddick? You're correct about what his motion was. The problem was that in order for that motion to prevail, it requires right. a four fifths. Right. It four. didn't prevail, but that was the motion. Right. I was just want clarification of the motion. Right. But right. yes, I realized the motion didn't prevail. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Eight. Thank you. We just wanted to make sure. <laughs> okay. okay. County Attorney Report, Mr. Sector. Mr. Chairman, I have two items. First item that's on your agenda is to consider a request for a landing authorization at the Santa Fe boat ramp. Hey, let me, uh, can you hold on a second? Let me see if I can shut that shut door. door. Or, or, yeah. I can't even hear you. Okay. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. <clears throat> we received a request from a gentleman by the name of Aaron Matthews with the company DHL Recovery LLC. Mr. Matthews was here tonight for at least an hour and a half and then indicated that he needed to leave. But I did want to say that he was here tonight. His request is, a, is for permission to use the boat ramp at the Santa Fe the Bradford County Santa Fe Lake boat ramp uh, for a deadhead logging operation in Lake Santa Fe. He's applying for a permit from DEP in order to do that. And, and basically, it's like you see on TV. They go out in the lake, they dive down, they locate old logs that had sunk to the bottom of the lake. They're not cutting down any new logs. They, I guess, dive down there, connect chains to them, and pull the logs up, and then take them out and sell them. The state allows that with a permit from DEP, which in order to receive that sort of permit, you have to demonstrate that you have legal access to the lake. They would like to access the lake using our public boat ramp. And so they need a form completed by Bradford County indicating they have permission to use the boat ramp. And so that's what he's asking for. And that's in Santa Fe Lake? Yes, sir. Danny, what are you, I'm Commissioner Reddick. Um, I, I talked to Mrs. Jill McGuire and um, explained it to her that, that we don't really control the lake. All we're really controlling is the boat ramp. Um, she did ask me, that, said that she would like to get some more information on this if, if we were able to table it until our next meeting um, for them to get some more information. Um, but, but at the same time, I also explained to her that um, we really have no control over what they do in the lake because if they get access from any other place on the lake, they can go ahead with it as long as they meet the uh, the requirements from uh, DHL. So it's okay with you? Well, I mean, let, let me ask a question. Yes, sir. Is that the, now? I I, you know, I just want to make sure if they damage the ramp, mm -hmm. the boat ramp, are are they going to then repair that? Because I had some fishers already told me say, well, if they go in and damage the boat ramp, mm -hmm. are they going to repair that? So, mm -hmm. so that would be, and that's just for some of the people that, that fish the lake uh, bought that up. That's, that's a good point, Mr. Chandler. Mm -hmm. Maybe, go ahead. That'd be something that we need to find yeah, maybe, out. Maybe, yes, we obligate yeah. ourselves. I mean, and, with these, and as I said, Mr. Mr. Matthews was here, and I think mm -hmm. he'd probably like to be able to respond to that, but and it, because the meeting took as long as it did, it may be better to put it off. To another just, meeting mm -hmm. until he can be here to answer those sort of questions. For I think that okay. would yeah, we just put it on the next on the next meeting, please. <laughs> okay. Will these yes. logs be used for his personal use? Yes. I, I, yes, sir. Well, I imagine they'll sell them, but uh, yes, sir. They'll, they'll belong to him. He'll get profit off of what right. you're asking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd be selling. Yeah. He ain't, he ain't doing it for the state, uh, or he ain't I mean, doing I it for. I figured he might want it to, for his sales. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Well, let's put it on the next agenda. Okay. 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 Yes, sir. Uh, Sheriff's report. Sorry, Did Mr. you get back? Thank you. Mr. Report. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lewis. Uh, I think the, I think the Mr. Lewis. Wants to say something. Oh, I'm sorry. I was rolling right along. Wasn't I? That's okay. I'm sorry. I have one item that's not on the agenda, and yes. I apologize for that. But um, Mr. Williams from MNR Construction is here. As the board is aware, Mr. Williams timely notified the county that he intended to protest our award of a bid on the Stella's Place project. Uh, and he also timely submitted his uh, detailed protest uh, 
document that came to us on the 19th, two days ago, which, I, as I say, was, was timely, but as a result was not able to appear on the agenda tonight. Our code requires that within seven days of our receiving that, we work to try to come to a solution to the protest that we can both agree on before we go down the road of <coughs> hiring a, an administrative law judge to consider the protest. I think that uh, after speaking with Mr. Williams tonight that I could probably suggest if, if the board, if the consensus of the board is to go along with that, um, working with Mr. Williams and MNR Construction to uh, resolve the bid protest along the following lines. MNR construction withdrawing the formal protest, which would save the, the county the money of having to hire the administrative law judge. The county agreeing to delay awarding the bid for the project until uh, we receive uh, the Attorney General's opinion that the board authorized us to request at your last meeting. And Bradford County would work in the meantime with MNR to draft that Attorney General's opinion request in such a way that MNR is satisfied and we're satisfied, which I absolutely believe we can do. And then I think we would both agree that our ultimate decision on the issue of whether or not the local preference would apply would be based on what the Attorney General's opinion says. And I, okay you I, I won't speak for Mr. Williams, but I, I, I think he gave me a gave thumbs up. up. Okay. <laughs> so this needs to be in the emergency item, correct? No, sir. I think as long as it's the consensus of the board that we can Absolutely. move in that direction. Um, try to, whatever you can do to try to. Yes, sir. Okay. Please. I want to go to fine. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Is <laughs> that all you have, Mr. Stacey? Yes, sir. But I. I think Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is that all you have? Yes, sir. Although I didn't know if Mr. Oh, Chandler had. I'm sorry. I wanted to ask a question, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I know this came up a little bit, and, and we kind of stopped there. But as we know, we, we do we are going to have the meeting on Friday. But we also I, we we had some conversation that said, uh, can we not receive any permits until after we've settled this? And and that's what I wanted to ask uh, the board and the lawyer. Is that something? The board wants to do because if, well, if yeah. they're allowed to, to continue to to make the permits before we go to that next meeting, then then ain't then a lot of even having the meeting. Be, huh? Ain't but a lot of even having the meeting. It's, it's going to be, but but and and my thing is that you want transparency. If you mm -hmm. if you if you don't do that, then are you really being transparent if you're going to give them time to then make another permit until we settle mm -hmm. this? So you're saying more permits until we have our workshop on the twenty third. Right. Yeah. Is, is, is that a possibility? Is that something we can do? Until we have our workshop next Friday night. And I'm, I'm going to try to understand your question is, can the board take action to say that we're not going to accept any applications? And I think the answer to that is the way, or at least in my estimation, the way the board would do that would be by implementing a moratorium on the acceptance of applications, which that was the way it was phrased when we put it to you at the emergency meeting. And mm -mm. I think at, as a matter of course, we received an application from HBS today. So I don't know that, that putting a stop to receiving future applications after tonight would make much of an impact on our ability to work in that interim time frame anyway. So, so what you're saying is they applied for a permit today? Yes, sir. Knowing that this was on the agenda for us to talk about tonight, they rushed in here and applied for a permit? Yes, sir. That's, that's pretty shady, if you ask me. That, that's, but, that's, but that's, you know, and here, here again, you know, I want to be fair to everybody, but my thing is that, that even when I got my email, it appeared that there there were things that that sip, sipped out in that email for all these people to find out that that was going on. It had to be things that slipped out in, in that. And, and mm -hmm. my thing is, we ought to be as transparent uh, as as a as as a board of county commission. We have to be transparent, even if they don't, mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, uh, that's our job. 
That's right. To, yes. to, to, to govern all of the citizens that we represent. And, and, and that's, you know, my thing is that if, if, if just doing some things to, to make sure that we're being transparent, that, that it doesn't look like we, we're trying to, you know, we've already uh, taken some money or something, because whether you like it or not, uh, perception is reality to most people. Right. And, and that's, that's my take. If, if, if people believe we're doing something crooked, if people believe we're getting money, whether we're doing it or not, that's how they believe that. And I, I've said all along, we have to be transparent in, in what we do as, as a board. Well, and, and while we're here, I was going to say it, Commissioner comment, but while we're there, that way we can slip, I can slip along. Go, go I don't right. know if it was good. I don't know if, if the mining is good. I don't know if the mining is bad for the county. The only thing I ever asked, and what I wanted to do was just have time to study it, as mm -hmm. Mr. Coons suggested and as every, everybody suggested. That, that's, that's, that's what I wanted. I, I, I didn't say I never wanted it. I mean, I don't, it may be the best thing in the world. I don't know. I heard a lot of people say it wasn't. But I don't know. I have no cussing idea if it's good or bad. And if everybody that thinks that I got any money or whatever, I ain't got no money. <laughs> and I, 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 I knew about 15 minutes of of what was in the paper two or three days or a day or whatever it was before that's all I ever knew I didn't know it three years ago and all and and all I, all I wanted was all what I would like to do is just have time would w wanted to do was just have time to study it but I understand what what you're saying and uh, I, I I but but my my biggest hang up now, not that I, not, I, I'll come every night if that's what it takes to be a county commissioner until I get beat. But is, I, I don't even, I don't see no need even having a, a, a workshop in my, in my little thin mind at this time because it's, it's over, you know. Or, I mean, I guess it is. Is that, I mean, is, am I wrong about that? What, what do you mean it's over? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, do I mean it, you, um, the moratorium failed? The application has been put out. We can, we can. You we can, can always still impose always one later. And, impose and, and reject the moratorium. application at any time. Ain't that right, Will? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can reject. I mean, yes, sir. The the board's going to have to have a public hearing on the application at some point in the future. Staff's going to have to go through an analysis. So. A final decision hasn't been made no sir. no I mean no. this you can I mean we could put that off for longer than a year what we voted on here tonight or accepted tonight am I correct yes sir all right okay. I misunderstood thank you no. and one thing I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you look where Bradford County would be if DuPont hadn't come in here years ago you know if it ain't affecting our waterways and our aquifer, these people, I mean, there's a lot I don't know about it. There's a lot I'm trying to learn about it. But uh, Bradford County needs growth. Bad. We need jobs in Bradford County. No, we don't need to destroy our waterways. But, uh, you know, we got kids coming up that, you know, they have to move away to get a job. All right, let's move on. County manager's report. Uh, <sighs> he went sleepy. Oh, there you go. Hey, Brian. Wake up. I think I've seen him in a fist fight every while ago. No, I'm awake. <laughs> hey, I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight to talk about. It is required of me to have a, uh, a uh, debris removal contract in place for Bradford County in, coast, in case we do have a major storm. Mm -hmm. And I've had several people call me and say, my gosh, what were you talking about, Eleven million nine hundred three thousand dollars But I'd like to explain that if I could <coughs> to <Please> begin. <laughs> the way. <laughs> do a whole lot. Yeah. Oh, Lord, it's yeah. a big one. Wait till he gets to the next one. Uh, Twelve million. <laughs> the, the, way, the way we have to bid this out is, is I do where if you're hauling debris 25 miles or less, mm -hmm. 26 to 50, 51 to 75, wow. 75 to 100, and over 100. So it would never be this high. So, so I have to, it just depends on how far our um, debris 
staging area is where we have to haul the debris. Chances are we'd never have to haul it over 100 miles into another county, mm -hmm. but we still have to bid it out that way. So out of all of those bids, we would only have one of those, you know, if it was the 25 miles. So we wouldn't have to worry about the other four that I had to bid out just in case that did happen. So it would never be $11,900,000 to haul our debris off. And, and I will ask for a secondary debris contractor tonight also, which would, that, that bumps us up to 80% what the state uh, would pay if we have a, a primary contractor and a secondary contractor and uh, then we would be responsible for the 20% in the county. <coughs> With that being said, we did open the bid on uh, March the 31st. Uh, and with the bids being uh, submitted, uh, the cheapest one, and, and uh, they are a qualified company, was Burgeon Emergency Services Incorporated. They're out of Pembroke Pines. Their bid was $11,903,000. And that would, uh, who I recommend to um, get this contract. It is a contract for a period of three years, in which is uh, we may, for two more years, opt to keep the same company. Just for conversation, to keep all the argument down. Mm -hmm. you, you don't, we don't owe them nothing until they haul a limb. Right? We don't owe them nothing. <laughs> no, no money will be exchanged yeah. hands until we have to call them in. Okay. All Since right. I've been here, we've never had to call our contractor in. We've always had one, and we've never had to call them in. What the attorney talked about earlier tonight is more for what Bradford County would, would be able to do with, with the debris he's talking about if we have a, a local state of emergency. Uh, our, so far, our road department and our fire departments have been able to handle everything that we've had. Okay. Okay. Do I hear a motion to do so? So moved. Got a motion. Second. And I'm second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 The next oh, one. Look at the next yeah. one. Uh, our, our second, uh, who, who would like to put in as a, a secondary contractor in case something happened to the first one, uh, is TAG uh, Grinding Services Incorporated. They're out of Marietta, Georgia. Their uh, bid was $12,228,600. Uh, same thing as the first one you know it, it's highly unlikely that would ever happen uh, but this will save us money if we we did had to come in because we do have a a secondary contract okay. right. and, and everybody understands what that, that again? uh twelve million two hundred twenty eight thousand six hundred dollars because ours says twelve million two hundred twenty eight thousand that don't say the six hundred no. so that, does everybody understand that? On that. uh yeah on, on both of mine it says the 600 on there we ain't got that 600. <laughs> you got to make up. You're out. You got the 12 million? But what the hell is got 12 million? million. What's the difference? We got, a, we got a $600 <laughs> discount over here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you figure that you figure And then some. Yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, but and once again, we don't, that's in just in case we need them. Mm -hmm. That's in All case. Right. Do I hear a motion? In, so motion. Got a motion. Here's a second. Second. A motion second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Okay. Aye. All opposed. And while I'm here, I would also like to say that we, we were doing the closeout on our Theresa project today. Southeast uh, 81st and 11th where those ditches have been dug out by Mr. Funderburk's crew. Um, we put new culverts in under the road. Uh, so we have applied for our, our grant money. We've, we've got our closeout uh, turned in on that. Uh, and that project will end up costing us very little, if anything. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the good news you need. Yeah, Miss Kelly. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. Um, the first item I have on the agenda is to consider approval of ship rehab case number 2014-25-S to award that to Southern Exteriors in the amount of 17584 Okay, you got the money. Yes, sir. Do I hear a motion? Do so move. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Five votes. Okay. Go the ahead. next item I have is to please consider change order number two on ship rehab file 2014-20-S in the amount of $2,490. I hear a motion. So moved. Second. Got a motion and second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Yes, ma'am. Okay. The last item I have on the agenda is to please consider approval of the engagement letter from Robert E. Taylor 
the county architect for assistance for ship replacement housing projects, and that is to not to exceed $4,090 per project. I hear a motion to do so. I hear a motion. What is this one again? Say it one more. It's the um, demo, the demolition replacement demolition housing. housing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I make a motion. Yeah, there a second. Second. A motion is second. Any further discussion? If not, I want to favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Me. Thank you very much. Mr. Robert Patron, please sir. Patron, come on up, please sir. It says no charge. We we be glad to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that might make yeah. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, we would like permission to upgrade the library security system to a wireless system through our current vendor at no charge to us. Uh, they would do it over a cellular network, which would mean they would have an easier time monitoring if the phone system goes down. They'll still be able to, plus, we would have access to that remotely through this system. If you have any questions, I have uh, Mr. Jim Carr with me from uh, crime prevention systems who can uh, answer any questions for you. Is this what you're, I mean, or? This is our current vendor and, and they, they do an ex extremely good job. And and this is your, I mean, you're, this, this is, what is my recommendation. Yes, yes, sir. Are your it's recommendation. Moving. Got a motion here? Yeah. You can go you second it then? Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussions? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank <clears> you. <throat> Thank y'all for staying here. Thank y'all. Okay. Item number G. Mr. Chairman, um, I would ask uh, Paul to come up and uh, be prepared to answer any questions, if he will, I'll, while I'm reading the. Uh, <laughs> but I ask the board to consider a proposal from uh, Great Southern Construction Equipment Company for a trade in offer of the 2012 Badger TM470 Boom Excavator uh, for a new 2016 Great All XL3100 V Hydraulic Excavator. Uh, balance total $256,327.06. And this is based on the uh, uh, direction that we got from the board at the, uh, at the, at the budget workshop. Okay. I'll make a motion we get this and get rid of that badger. Can I hear a second? I'll second it. Any further discussion? Yes. Mr. Paul, so I do also remember us talking at the budget workshop. You had y'all had mentioned something about the great need of um, a zipper. Is, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You know, <laughs> that's where we go and do the roads. Okay. I know a little bit about right. that. Um now oh, I, I know <laughs> no it ain't our zipper on my dress. <laughs> I know Eddie, that Eddie, Eddie. I know that. Somebody got to laugh. We sometime. talked about <laughs> doing this only um, spending this money for emergency. And I understand the dire need of this because we need it. But we're going to have to consider also, I mean, guys, if it comes time that they want this zipper or something, I mean, we just can't have everything declared as an emergency. And I know you need it, Mr. Well, Paul. I'm not saying that, but we just got to be careful because we sat there in the budget workshop and right. said we would not spend the money unless it was a real emergency. So what are we going to do with this others? Uh, no, I said we, I approve, no, I don't have a problem I mean, with this one. Well, what I think we should do, oh, you ain't got anything there, Reverend? How, how old is the old one we got now? Not the zipper? No. No, 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 I mean, I, I just, we need the piece of equipment. That's and, better. And I, I don't have a Ms. problem. Summers I agree with that. mentioning that we also need the other piece of equipment, but financially, we're not going to be able to just to do to do that and, and say this is an emergency now. So you know, we, we well, that's which one that do you need the worst. <clears throat> that, that's my All question. Right. All right, which we need. I feel we need the great all the most. Excellent. The great all is like a grater. It runs every day. If it goes down, there'll be no culverts, no ditches, no special projects until it's fixed. Then you just declared you know you need it, and it's uh, an emergency, and right. that's what I don't have a problem with. But since you brought the zipper up. See, <laughs> but we don't. <laughs> we're both uh, done for that now. But I just want to explain. All right, I just Go ahead and tell me because I did mention it. Since we, you did bring the zipper up, the uh, last offer we had on that was they will finance that for five years. We'll get There will be no payment due for one year. And right now we're spending about $2,500 a month to repair potholes and milled roads, which that comes up to $30,000. Yeah. 
roughly, mm -hmm. and the uh, annual payments would be 32000 on that zipper. I'm not pushing the zipper. I'm happy with the grade all. I just wanted to let you know. Thank that. you so much for that information. I can I can see the need for I can see the need for the grade all, mm -hmm. and I understand about the zipper. But listen, what we got. Listen, our deficit on our budget keeps going down. This is coming straight off. I, mean, I think I heard Commissioner Thompson say what we're going to do with Owen. I would think that we should take the $65,000. I don't know if you can rent one or something as you need it, if it tore up, and try to keep our, our budget in balance. Now, when you say rent, what? Mm -hmm. you say yeah, a great off, if we needed to rent. If they're available, I mean, Mr. I mean, if they're available. Yeah. Right. Great yeah. off. Uh, but, mm. So you're saying you don't want to buy this one? Well, I, I just think that we should, our budget is what well, was a million and three and was it three million and three a million and one in deficit, I, I, Craig? And well, I was just thinking about taking this money and, and putting okay. it in no, the. Mr. Ray, we the talked about this. And well, let me. Let we me, stopped the milling of the roads. Okay. Right. That was five hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. mm -hmm. dollars. Uh, and this would help bring it on down lower. That, that's my feeling. I, I mean, mean, I'm just, I'm just that, saying my feeling. Everybody's got opinion. You know and, what I mean? And, and, like, and, and I certainly understand. I know Mr. Reddick wants to say something. Go ahead, Ross. Go ahead, Ross. If we rent a piece of equipment, and that's going to cost us sixty thousand or so a year, mm -hmm. have we really helped ourselves? No. Nope. You have not. Anything you, any, anything we, we're just renting. That means there's not no return on that. That's what bothers me. Okay, well let me just say this much, just real quick. Everyone here understands that this is coming and this is not helping to reduce our deficit on our budget. You know, everybody here understands that. Mm -hmm. May I make a comment too for when you finish? Before you. Yes, sir. We, we do, I do understand. Yes, sir. And I'm not, trying to be a, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be a smart boy. I'm just saying, yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, the only comment I wanted to make is, you know, I'm just bringing this up, just throwing all the options out. If we sold the Badger, and then if we looked for a good used piece of equipment, a good used grade all, because the one that you have now, we bought used, and that's lasted a good while, and that was a, a very good deal we got on that one. And um, I'm just wondering, would it be better for us to do that? I guarantee, I know we need to get rid of that Badger. Get rid of the Badger, hold off, see what we got, see how the great all you got is working, and be looking for a good used great all that we might be able to save some money on. Because even if it only lasted four or five, six years, that would give us time to, to possibly start pulling out of debt rather than, you know, and, and, I'll, and I'll throw one last thing in and I'll be quiet. If, if you went with something used and could get the money right, then maybe you could get the zipper and actually get both so you could save money on the millings by using the zipper but you'd also have a two grade alls too right so i i'm i'm just throwing these options out board that's all i'm that's all i'm saying all right yeah. uh, mm. we're ready to go you ready go ahead Rip. And, and again and again the zipper is important because Okay. We can't. We can't really. We we might as well stop doing millings until mm -hmm. we get that zipper. That's why right. we So we can. We so have those to. Rows, we have, yeah. those, <laughs> those rows can be uh, more accessible, mm -hmm. and you know, not so bumpy. Because mm -hmm. right now, all, all the potholes. I mean, it's it's killing them. I mean, they mm -hmm. they're just spending a ton of money for nothing until we get that piece of equipment. So we're gonna need the piece of equipment if we want to buy a use or whatever we do. Let's look for the best deal before we buy something new. Do I? I'm 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 amenable to to get oh, the best deal check, we can get. Didn't you check on some used ones? Pardon? Didn't you check on some used ones? Uh, if you can find them. Yeah. Uh, they were starting somewhere around a hundred thousand dollars. Well, see, yeah, that'd be a hell of a saving. Mm -hmm. Heck of a saving yeah. if we can. If find you them. can find them. If we can. Yeah, if we can find them. one in good shape too. Right. You don't want to right. just find one that's ragged. Right. We, I'm not going to check. Exactly. Because <laughs> if you found a good use grade all for around 100000 And you had 65 to put, and you sold them for 65 you'd be. Yeah. Th and, mm -hmm. you know. Is that what our final offer was on that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
65. Wasn't 65 it? was our offer. Uh, Great Southern I was going to put the other 35 in. But gracious of their heart, I, they're making money, believe me. Oh, yeah. But, uh, they are. To make it 100000 Now, the, if you do not approve the purchase of the new one, the deal is off. The deal's off. Because I'm anticipating a call. They're not, they're not gonna they're, they're not, not gonna, gonna buy, buy trade they, trade. They, they think we've strung them along too long and they said I'm anticipating a call in the morning. Yep. And uh and you'll if, get if it we him. turn it down, which But the guy but the guy that offered the sixty five thousand his has been his is his still good? No. All right, that's good. Stop. Good question. The guy that offered sixty five thousand and the buyer of the Badger from Great Southern is the same guy. Same guy. Wow. <laughs> well, ain't that something? So, so. And look, they'll be calling like, him in the morning. Look like y'all ain't got up, up the creek. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm telling you now. That's up the creek because you still got to pay for that piece of equipment. What's that? <laughs> I, if, if we, <laughs> we're going to get 65000 off, that's mm -hmm. all. But we still got to pay for that piece of equipment yep. along with a new, new piece of equipment. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's a bunch of money left on that. So I mean, you know, we up the creek. That's you know, I, I, we're going to have to decide what we're going to do, though. We, and we need to sit here. Well, uh, uh, Commissioner Reddy, we, uh, we, we, we got a motion. In a, we got in a motion in a second. Um, any further discussion? <laughs> if not, ever, then you didn't. We're clear. Okay. Y'all okay. clear? Okay. We got a motion in a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. <laughs> now y'all done got us all worried about what we're going to do. <laughs> yes, what I'd like to do is what do you if we do? could find one, if Mr. Paul said possibly you might could find a good user for $100,000, I, I would like to do that. I, I mean, didn't say I could. I didn't say you to good. I didn't say you to I said he possibly could. He said he possibly could. But we still got to pay on that piece of equipment, that badger, which is no good. On the we keep playing on it we own until it. we get it. We own 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 it. Right. Right. We own that. I was speaking to say, but we own because we The board voted to pay that right. off in order to take order it to, to be auction or at auctions to see what you could get out of it. The county we, we owns the badger. It's got a title to it yep. per the board's decision. <laughs> so, so can we give Good. Paul the authorization to go ahead and sell that badger if that man wants to buy it for 65 that's a that's for the it's the same man though it's and the, the man. man's not going it's a man that's buying it from the company but correct I, Paul? he's buying it from the company he's buying it from if the company he, if he ain't got it there that man's not going to buy it probably okay correct? yeah once once the auction was over he went with the uh, Great Southern Company uh -huh. and put that deal together. Right. Yeah. After the auction was over. Um, what did they bring at the auction? Quit. Okay, right. listen. All right, Ross, what All we got moving along where we can get the, or, Yeah, I'm way, I'm, I'm way out. I'm, 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 I'm way Commit. I, I like Commissioner Reddick's ideal and, ideal. and, and trying to, to come up with maybe a, possibly a used one. And that, you know, but we do have a motion to take it. I asked. We didn't get no. <laughs> we didn't get. No. Well, so much discussion afterwards. <laughs> we can't decide what we got to do. <laughs> but can we? Well, can we at least put this off and let Mr. Paul look and see if he can find one? That deal gonna be off. That deal, deal be, be off. off. The deal be off. Morning. Exactly. Be off. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. Yeah. And tomorrow morning, that man will be calling. Yeah. And that deal will be off. So we got a motion to take it. All in favor. Call them in the morning see if you can find a user. Okay. Mr. You, you have motion, motion fail for lack of something. Lack of participation. Participation or something. <laughs> for for lack we ain't we, we had too much phosphate. That's right. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Breathe. All right. Breathe too much smoke. What I what I need to say and what I don't really know how to handle that one. I don't either. Ask how many people are opposed to it. How, opposed to the, mm -hmm. how many, can I ask? <laughs> what a show of hands? So no one voted in favor of it, and That's then right. you'd normally ask who's opposed to okay, it. Okay, who's opposed to it? Aye. 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 Okay. There. You opposed to what? Not going ahead and buying the new one. How'd you vote? I uh, voted 
not with y'all. Okay, it's four or one. I'm in. I'm in left field waiting on a fox fly. Okay. <laughs> one four. One four. I'm sorry. I'm used to the other way. Money, okay. Okay. Commit. Commissioner's comments. Commissioner Reddy. Um, all I'm just asking is the board is to re request permission to refund the city of Hampton to, um, of the paid permit fees uh, for the building repair to the, um, uh, the the fire station in Hampton for us to put our trucks in. Um, if you've been through Hampton, they're, they're doing a great job. Uh, there's big changes going on in Hampton. The fire station has a new roof, new ceiling. Um, they're putting heaters in there. They're painting it. Um, and also, if you notice, the City Hall of Hampton's being painted and totally refurbished. The inside is really looking great. So um, all I'm asking, I believe I checked on it today, the permit fee was $84, but I'm just asking the board if, if we would give back the $84 to Hampton for that permit fee. You make that a motion? Yes, I make that a motion. I hear a second. Second. Our motion second. Any further discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Five voted. Give the money back. The permit fee's back. Um, no, Commissioner Chandler? I, I don't even want to talk anymore. Me either. Commissioner Seller? I had a lot to say, but I'm not going to now. Mr. Thompson? <laughs> hey, man, let's go down. Yeah, let's go home. <laughs> All right. Meet the adjourned. <laughs> That's the longest I've sat down in a long time.